Hello, everybody, and welcome to the finals of season one of KCM 2024. We're here with the Terran versus Protoss conclusion to this epic, epic season. And we've got Shun here in the booth on a brand new microphone. You ready for the voice reveal, Shun? Here we go. Give it to him. Hey, guys, this is Shun bringing you my new voice. Hope you can settle down, settle in with it. Hope you get used to it real quick because it's here to stay. We're going to be having Snow going up against Royal, game number one. Got a sick lineup here and a beautiful, beautiful voice with that great microphone. Thank you to all the fans for supporting the show. Wouldn't be able to uh, splurge out and purchase things like this and, and really invest in the stream uh, without your guys' support. So shout out to you guys, everyone in the Patreon, everyone who likes and supports these videos. Now, we've got Best, Snow, Bisu, Mini, Royal, Sharp, Rush, and Light. A fantastic lineup here, but... Noticeably missing, I, I mean, we, we don't have Mong here, the, the mm. TVP specialist. And we've got Light back in, and we've only had one win this season for Terran. That was in the semifinals, right. and that was when Light was not present. So, uh, is the Curse of Light going to be back here? Or are we going to see Protoss take down uh, Terran one more time? Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of Light, don't get me wrong, but he hasn't really been putting up very strong performance as far as TVP is concerned uh, this season of KCM. Would like to see a big turnaround now, and uh, if he's going to be taking the slot of Mong, I would certainly hope he does bring his A-game today. Yeah, it's shocking, really. I, I do agree with you. He is a great player. He's um, definitely one of the favorites uh, of Terran, but... Uh, even, you know, Artosis has said that he's maybe the best player in the entire world right now but based on just performance in the kcm i can't agree i think one of the best players right now is ironically best snow is amazing as well and i'm glad we've got sharp in here rush has been putting up a lot of good performances but light just isn't at the top of that list no i mean he obviously is like an asl champion he's an absolute powerhouse of a player he's got so much experience under his belt and if this was a live event i'd probably have more reason to have him here but since this isn't a live event i think there's even slightly less reason to have him in this lineup well we'll see how he performs here but first we're gonna have royal versus snow and snow honestly he could just wipe the floor with all of these terror but we might see another all kill here man this this could be yeah a very quick run in the, the finals but uh, I'm hoping that we see a really good series here. Well, I mean, to ca to combat someone like Snow, I imagine we're going to be seeing a lot of, like, 5 fact, 6 fact kind of play out of these Terran players because he's just so good with his Reaver control that, at the very least, he's going to slow down any push you do do and maybe even potentially get crazy amounts of damage on top of that as well. So I imagine a lot of these uh, Terran players are going to be opting for a very heavy unit uh, count during the mid-game phase to try and combat that. Yeah, there's... I mean, that, that's a style that's kind of been invented to counter what Snow can do with Reavers is the four or five, even sometimes more factories in order to take your third base. Uh, some pl players even skipping over upgrades uh, in order to get those factories out sooner so they can get into their third base and getting the later upgrades just so that they can survive that sort of early mid game where the Reavers are so powerful and, and so good at slowing down their pushes and uh, slowing down their third base, but um, we'll, we'll see how tentative Royal is here. It's pretty easy to take your base on this map. Taking the third is not too difficult on Apocalypse. It's taking the next base after that, which is really difficult. Right, and it looks like Snow's going for some kind of DT build, whereas uh, Royal's doing a very like standard one factory, leave one on the gas, go into Vulture, then throw down the CC. So slightly delayed Nexus here from Snow, going to be throwing that down around 28 supply, but yeah, if we done that Citadel, we're doing really early on, so it looks like he wants to do some kind of cheesy DT shenanigans, maybe into a, a triple base up to play as a follow-up. That's the great thing about Snow, he's got such a wide variety of strategies that he can go for he's he's so uh just robust in terms of his protoss versus terran play that you can't count him out of going any sort of strategy but oh god that just barely survived you can't count count him out of doing something like a dt play but he's just so good with reavers that's kind of what you expect every game and it can still you know catch you off guard if he goes for that dt play 
Right, and that, those are the scariest players where they've kind of got this like range of play despite also being very good at a very like niche style. So like players like Shine, if they're really good at cheesy play, but also can do the standard play as well, it, it just keeps you guessing the entire time. So Royal's going to sniff this out if he wants any chance, not taking any too much of a signal with damage from this. So. So far, it seems like he's doing a good job of catching these goons, shaving off some of their HP, kind of preventing the ability of maybe them coming in and helping with the bus later on. But uh, as, at the same time, I don't think Royal's kind of figured out what's going on just yet. So I'm not sure how he's going to fare in the next stage of the game. Yeah, he's getting some mines out here. The fact that none of these vultures have been picked off and that mines are getting laid all over uh, is making me feel like he's got a pretty good chance of holding on against this uh, DT attack. But... Uh, we'll have to see here. I didn't see. Was there a robo in the main base? Not yet. So he's just going to walk DTs across the map. And the mine coverage should be enough here. Plus, Royal, you know, expecting to see a Reaver play out of snow. He'll probably start throwing down turrets. There we go. He's got turrets here. So he should be okay. And I don't really know what these DTs can do here. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't gone to eBay. He's gone for um, Armory. Uh, sorry, he has gone uh, eBay into Armory, so he hasn't got any Academy. So he needs to make sure he doesn't lose this one turret at the front to these uh, Dragoons busting in. It looks like, ooh, a nice little shuffle micro from Snow, though, picking off two of the mines, clearing the way for these DTs, which are making their way now. It's one DT and just one mine. So with the turret there, going to be shutting that down, just taking it down to 11 HP. So pretty useless DT for the time being, but now going to be starting to force a little bit of attack spill on the repair here, force these tanks to come up position. So far, though, Royal done a great job of weathering the storm, not really taking any damage, and has these third and fourth base mined up, so it can really, like, interfere, and also keep an eye on the expansion path of Snow going forward. Okay, so Snow deviating from his normal playstyle, not going for the Reavers. Can he still, you know, dominate Terran? Uh, in his usual fashion without having that tech online because he's just not going to have it here uh, and the DT play just hasn't done anything. So this is looking a little worrisome for me. Are we going to see Snow get knocked out first? That would be absolutely incredible here. Snow, or I mean, it's not that Snow's out of this game just yet, but Royal is in a great position after dealing with the DT play so well. Yeah, I mean... It's looking kind of a little bit worrisome for Snow. Like he's de deviating from it, deviating from his play like this. Seems like he's now going to be pretty dependent on some kind of drop play being successful to kind of claw his way back into the game. That could be like a storm drop coming up in the next few minutes, maybe to kind of reset the Terran's economy a little bit. But I see a starport coming out royal off of two factories, so he's happy just to go heavy into his own tech and upgrades. So yeah, it looks like it's looking better and better for Royal the longer this game's going on so far. We will be grabbing a pretty quick third base here um, with the DT out on the field and no scans. It's going to take some time for Royal to kind of beef up here to get out on the on the map. So we do have a bit of time for Snow. He can kind of clear these mines over on the left hand side, maybe grab another base. I'd like to see him take maybe another uh, main base right off the bat here, that 12 o'clock, and start to kind of lock down those areas as well. Um, because we know that Royal, I don't, you know, he's not going to push out right away here. Oh, gets a tank there. Nicely done. Trading that out for a DT. You usually want to get more out of your DTs, but that's a, still a pretty reasonable trade here. At least picking off one tank. Going to slow this push down a little bit. Um, we are going to see Royal come out and take this third base, though, in, in pretty good time. It's only eight and a half minutes in and he's already kind of gearing up to move forward and take that base so we're gonna see a big explosive royal here uh, off of three bays uh come across the map and i don't know if snow's gonna be ready in time yeah he's, we just saw a big scan go off in the main base of uh snow and royal identified the five gateway production available to snow so he's gonna feel fairly confident in uh, both taking this third base a bit tentatively while also sending out a dropship out onto the map there is this observer that's like moving around to clear out the mines to this fourth base location i'm curious if this dropship will kind of intercept that and he'll see this incoming dropship as a result but i think the mu i don't know if 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 Royal's paying attention now, he might realize exactly where roughly that observer's positioned based on these mines dying, and we'll be able to navigate around that. So, it might be able to still slip this dropship in. Cannon here at the back, and a DT there makes it a little bit uh, rough to try and drop. And oh, he's going to find this. Really nice catch here by Snow, but 
We're all just going to take the opportunity to drop some mines over here at the fourth and just try to slow that down as much as possible. Unfortunately, eating some damage from that. Uh, Self-inflicted damage there from that mine. And it will pick up and move away. He can place, you know, those vultures over at 12 o'clock. Make sure he's got some mines over there. Make sure that that base doesn't go down too quickly. But Snow's definitely going to try and take his fourth base now as Royal gears up to take this third. Everything is kind of going to plan here for Royal, and that makes me worried for Snow. He's usually the one in the driver's seat. He's usually taking control of the Terran player of, of the game, and it just doesn't feel like he has that control this game. I wonder if he can still grind it out here in a long one if, if Royal's you know, got his third base up on time, actually early right now. He's got his upgrades rolling perfectly. Will he be able to just, you know, mech smash this man? Or is Snow going to find some way to finesse a victory here? I'm curious. Well, I mean, the way Royal's been so composed in taking this third base, it's looking like that's not going to be the case. He's not left, left any, like, stone unturned and made sure there was no counterplay available to Snow during this transition into third base. And just as, like, Snow had any chance at, like, maybe squashing the third base, like, he was just happy just to make it at a distance and float it later. So instead, it doesn't matter that Snow got this, like, small explosion of gateways. Now it's too late. Like, there's enough tank count that's been built up. Hard, only just one tank. Now we see a shuttle play into the main base with some DTs, but I don't think he's going to really find like The storm drop here could be the thing that he really needs to come back in this game, but he's only going to kill one or two SCVs with that storm drop. Tries to get the, the SCV train on the exit, but good turnaround from Royal not going to be uh, allowing that to transpire. So, so far, uh, Royal's done a great job of weathering those storms and now looking stronger and stronger as time goes on. Supplies even almost dead even. Oh, that was a really great opportunity there to kill a lot of SCVs, but Snow kind of missed the bag there. He didn't quite get it. He didn't pick off this dropship either as it was flying in. You know, Royal wasn't paying attention. Neither was Snow. So that dropship still going to be alive here in the fourth base is coming online, but this is still Royal with a really great SCV count. He's got his upgrades. He's got that mech army rolling. This is going to be a scary push, and I don't know if just pure Templar is going to be enough to do it. This is like a best style of play, right? This is what we right. expect from best. It's not really what we expect from Snow. We expect those Reavers to slow things down so much that, you know, he can overwhelm with just his typical you know, gateway man play with some a few shuttles here and there and a few extra Reavers thrown in, but... You know, Best is the one who's perfect at cr cracking these positions with Storm and Zealots. It's not Snow, typically. We'll have to see how his uh, his play with Templar Storm uh, and uh, Zealot Bombs is in comparison to a player like Best. Meanwhile, Royal's got plus two weapons just come online now. Science Vessel's out, EMP on the way. He's got all the tools in his arsenal needed to dismantle a player of Snow's caliber. And like you say, he's kind of going for, Snow's kind of going for his own, like, set of tools that aren't quite, uh, you know, his forte. So I'm not so sure how he's going to be able to deal with the Royal uh, going forward. He's going to, like, try and send some Zealots in, try and see if he can get some bombs on these tanks, some mine drags and a beautiful storm on the tanks in front. But even need a double storm to finish those two tanks off. So not the most efficient of trades for Snow as well, despite starting to skirmish with Royal. He does need to keep Royal at bay here while he starts to surge up in his own production, getting his fifth base online. He can start to set up some more gateways in the 12 o'clock position and really increase his production. If he can slow Royal down over the next few minutes, maybe he'll get the kind of production going that he can start to fight this Terran army head on. But it's going to be some time and Royal's going to start to explode out onto this high ground uh, plateau now and, and really start to take the pain to snow if he can't overcome this army right here right now. All right, there's no mines in front of this army right here. He does gun down that shuttle, though. I don't know how many Templar was still in there. He gets a couple of good storms, but man, that does suck. Losing that shuttle, probably with two high Templar worth of, at, at, you know, maybe with two storms on there as well. Uh, getting forced back here. He's still got quite a few dragoons on this high ground, but Royal is not phased. He's going to start pushing up. That's such a clump tank count. Those tanks would get absolutely ravaged by storm if he had them, but I just don't think that Snow has the storms right now to deal with this. Here comes a rally of Zealots. He's going to jump on top of these tanks that have uh, braved this high ground here. Can he get the storms that he needs? He actually gets storms on that, but I think he should have saved the storms for these back tanks. These tanks here on the low ground with, that are hugely stacked up, and he's kind of 
uh, tentatively pushing forward here, but you can't do that with Storm. You have to shove everything into your opponent and then drop the Storm and get those uh, spells off. You can't be kind of walking forward like that with the Templar. You're going to end up losing way too many of them, and here it goes. Some of the Vultures coming out here, picking those off. Some Storms being thrown down. They're getting some value, but Snow's army is just melting here. There goes all the Dragoons, and Royal going to take his high ground. Yeah, Snow only ahead by just like 13 supply right now. Needs to desperately get this second rally point set up in the 12 o'clock position. He's throwing down gateways as we speak. But Royal's already going to be setting up his fourth base. He's going to be sitting pretty. He can even attack and defend at the same time along this horizontal axis and come up here to the natural rally point of Snow and cut this off. So if Snow hasn't got quite a few gateways stacked up at 12 o'clock by that time, then Royal is just going to like close the door on him and like basically just like put the noose around his neck and strangle him out this game so right now snow is trying to like stay active on the map kind of keep some counter play pressure available to him should royal be a little bit too hasty in coming out but royal's been very tentative and not really like you know pulling the trigger until it's time only just now starting to send out vulture raiding pies he spotted a little probe train with one vulture he's seeing if he can intercept from the left hand side to get as many of these probes as possible potentially Ooh, this is nasty picking off a bunch of these probes okay he does turn around at least but there's not a high dragoon count here to deal with this number of vultures and they're gonna come in and raid at the base here in the top left start to pick off these cannons yeah there's just not enough cannons here good probe drilling kind of Bu bugging out some of these vultures but then these mines here are going to connect on a bunch of zealots and temple are even going to get picked off as well the rallies coming out are going to start to get picked off here from these gateways in the top center we're also not going to let snow get this base online is he he's 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 going to just shut this down pretty quickly i think moving forward here and, and uh, you know trying to kind of force snow out of this corner of the map will probably be the victory condition for royal well just the fact that he delayed mining so long in this top left has really dried up snow as you can see the supplies are pretty much dead even and royal's coming ahead on the economy front he's only just now starting to set up mining and here comes another round of vultures he's just not allowing him any room to breathe right now and snow cannot find any wind in his sails to finally get going he's got these gateways set up at 12 o'clock but he's not got the kind of um, mineral income to actually put, get these gateways online and make use of them currently even on supply with Royal Ray should be maxed right by now I think we're gonna have a storm drop here coming down to this bottom fourth base here comes a storm not bad pretty good kills there doesn't get the second storm off unfortunately but but a few SCVs do go down I don't think it's gonna hurt Royal too badly though he's already ahead in supply and the damage that was done by that storm it just cannot compare to all the probes that were killed by those vultures just moments ago. Well, is one thing we can say for Snow, if he can somehow be very active out on the map and keep storming this army as it advances, there is a small chance here that he can slow down the advance long enough to keep remaxing and throw some cost-efficient trades Royal's way. But look at this tank spread from Royal. He's kind of anticipating the worst state possible, and he's really slowly pushing out into the middle, solidify his position to try and challenge Snow into a bad engagement right now. And Snow's getting a little bit impatient and a little bit flustered, maybe. It's possible he'll take a few bad trades here if he's not um, composed enough, and that's exactly what Royal's hoping for. Meanwhile, he's like opening up this big lane to the left so he can sneak out vulture raids and what have you and force the army of snow out of position and uh, i think that over time we're just going to close the door on snow and very slowly creep up this left hand side take these bases while also putting on pressure and leaving him an opportunity to counter attack royal brought his a game today man he's playing so well here really shutting down snow's every option right now and keeping all of his tanks so spread out adding on turrets everywhere he's got the D Matrix just in time there to keep that tank alive. That's going to deal a lot of extra damage. It takes so long to kill off that tank, and more and more dragoons end up getting splattered. This fifth base is going to come up here without a hitch. Royal just on fire right now, and I, I think that Snow might get knocked out here. He's finally adding on robotics. <laughs> this is the latest robotics I've ever seen in a Snow TVP game. Yeah, 19 minute uh, robo for a snow PVT seems a little bit abnormal. They've got 3 2 upgrades for Royal to the 2 1 of snow. Currently seeing pretty is Royal with this upgrade advantage, but that will start to uh, become less of an issue the longer the game does go on. But 
Also, the longer the game goes on, the game state does actually start to favor Royal more and more. This split map uh, condition does really favor the Terran, especially when there's uh, no carriers on the agenda. So right now, Royal's looking really good, and we do have a small counterattack here from Snow charging down the right-hand lane with a bunch of speed lots and a shuttle. They're trying to even come in here and open a position for some big storm drops, hopefully to cripple the Terran's economy. Ooh, the EMP! Oh, wow. Great EMP there from Royal just shutting that down immediately. That, oh, that really sucks for Snowman. That, he was banking on killing a lot of uh, SEVs there. That was his, uh, his storms, his splash damage for this next upcoming fight, but he threw it away to get that damage. He didn't even get any damage there. Now he's got a few storms popping out here. He will be able to lay them down on these tanks, but look at how nicely spread everything is for Royal. The best he can get is three of those tanks with one storm, but he's not even going to be able to get a follow-up storm here to finish them off, and Snow is just about out of this one at 160 supply. He's 30 supply behind this Terran opponent, this Terran opponent. Royal taking that high ground plateau right out in front of his natural. Beautifully done here. At, like, from start to finish, Royal just playing a fantastic TVP right now. Yeah, it's an absolute masterclass in standard TVP play. Like, nothing no, nothing fancy, just really, like, orthodox, strong play. Dotting his I's, crossing his T's, not missing a beat with his upgrade timings, and understanding the exact triggers and timings to finally explode out onto the map and start to set up those win conditions. Now that he's got this rally point contained, he can start hitting some of these pocket bases, which will be mostly undefended, and even come in here. And the EMP, this Arbiter, gonna get the EMP on the Arbiter right before dying to the cannon there. Going to be shutting down any more further counterplay options from Snow. No recall is going to be happening or any stasis is going to be saving him anytime soon. So now Royal in the full power and driver's seat of the Terran army behind the fort, behind his will right now. And his will is to eliminate all of these bases one at a time and starve Snow out of this game slowly but surely. Death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, this, this is brutal. Absolute brutal takedown of Snow. You never see Snow get worked over by a Terran player quite like this. But it all comes down to that opening, man. The opening is not Snow's typical play style. He wanted to try and do something that Royal wouldn't expect. And even though it was unexpected, Royal still handled it perfectly. He knows how to play against DT. He's not going to cut corners in order to... Uh, you know, get an advantage over uh, Snow. He's going to still put out those mines in the front. He's still going to build turrets because we expect Reavers to come in. But, you know, Snow didn't get any big advantages in the early game. And now he's just on the back foot for the entire rest of this set here. It's crazy how good Royal is playing right now. He's got such a spread. It, it's, it's ridiculous. You see so many Terran players die because they lose all of their tanks that are stacked up against storms but just look at the spread out that royal's been doing this entire game he's got every tank like one storm apart from each other it's just beautiful to see yeah honestly it looks unstoppable it looks like he's like just barely calculated the perfect amount of tanks he needs in every position look how spread these tanks are yeah snow's gonna break out of this but not super cost efficiently like look how many units he lost just to kill those like handful of tanks and there's, there's loads more units left in the center of the map there's another army uh, killing this other rally point at 12 o'clock he's basically used up his entire force on the right side of the map just to break free on this high ground plateau and that's just how royal wants it he's got everything calculated out perfectly so he's got just barely the right amount of units where he wants them to keep control of the game and force snow into an impossible situation and an insurmountable mountain for him to climb here uh, he's he's in a terrible spot right now and we're just i think seeing the closing moments here of this game as he slowly pushes into the top center that's the last bastion here for snow he's gonna throw down a couple storms but I mean, you've got to know it's it's over at this point. He's going to come up from behind uh, with another army, maybe try to actually break into the center left, but even killing that base is not going to win him the game right now. We've still got multiple bases mining here for Royal. That's really all he needs, and he's maxed out. He's starting to gain a bank right now. This is, this is beyond over here. Snow is going to come in, try to kill some SCVs, but SCV kills are just not what you need. The army... 
is unstoppable right now for Royal. He's going to come out one last time, try to drop some Zealots on top of these tanks. They are on siege right now, and he can kill quite a few of them. Maybe throw down some good storms on these tanks here on the left-hand side, pick them off, and he will save the rally point for now. But I think this is just, you know, water under the bridge here for Royal. He's going to eventually rebuild this army, and he's already 50 supply ahead. He should be able to uh, rally up to this uh, position on the map and eventually take this out. He won't even lose this position, honestly. Look at that. The rally's already making their way up here, and they're going to clear this army out, and there's just nothing left for Snow. Yeah, it's a three base production versus one at the moment due to the mining base situation. There's just not enough coming in for Snow. GG finally called, and Team Terran going to be getting an early lead in this. And wow, it's going to be hard to make the choice to revive Snow later on after that performance as well. Yeah, the late uh, GG there from Snow. I, I think he was actually in shock at how good Roy was playing and just how brutally. Uh, Snow was getting destroyed there himself, really confused about that game state, but that's what happens when your opener doesn't go according to plan, when you don't get that early damage. He's so used to getting that early reaver damage, it seems like every single game he's ahead from the beginning, from like the 10 minute mark, he's already got a kind of an advantage, but in this game, not the case. Roll was able to play his style, and he takes out... Snow to start this series. What a turn of events here. Let's jump into game number two. Okay, best being sent out next against Royal. He's going to be spawning here in the bottom right hand corner on Blitz Y. Great little map here. I've been enjoying this this map a lot. For a two player map, I feel like it's it's pretty reasonable. It, it does give a pretty decent range of play, don't you think, Jim? Yeah, I, I think I, I like this map a lot. At least, uh, again, I think it's for me. It's it's a little bit like um, some of the other maps where, like a Troy, like it's not necessarily a map I'd be really happy to play on, but I certainly would be happy to watch pros play on it. And I think I feel that way about Blitz Y as well. I, I think we too see some great games on here. And with how open the left is, it does allow for some really strategic late game tug of war shenanigans. Whereas this like tight catwalk on the right hand side really does fuel the early game so it can be quite explosive as a result no guest deal as a result but i imagine we will be seeing that in just a few moments here from best uh, no reason for him not to go for that here i take control of this game in the early stages but royal doesn't seem too concerned about that we've seen some interesting changes recently some players doing things like taking their gas and then canceling like getting the worker off of it to just mine minerals and take the later uh, barracks we've seen people delay the barracks uh, to just get the gas early we've seen uh, players get the barracks and then cancel the worker to get the gas a little bit earlier um there's there's a quite a range of different ways to deal with the gas deal but none of them are very comfortable and i think royal's more comfortable just taking a gasless fast expand on this map i think that's the strategy that he's going to go for and it is kind of playing into best hands but it's also if you know Royal planned to do that all along anyway. It's 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 gonna work out all right for him, I think. Yeah, and uh, looks like Best's gonna go for that tried and true forward gateway with some zealot aggression as well. There is two supply depots to the right of this uh, barracks, providing two holes to micro in and out of, which uh, the marine can fit through, but the zealot can't. So should be okay in dealing with that. Most of the pros these days are very good at dealing with this initial zealot pressure. So we might be seeing a little bit of a meta shift as time goes on. Maybe this will be a little bit out of favor. But it looks like Best still gonna be making the most of it, getting this gas deal and going zealot, zealot, goon. Maybe even triple zealot, I don't know. Um, I think on a lot of pressure here with these initial zealots, he will at least attempt to maybe waiting for the second zealot before going in as well. I can't imagine that this is better. This is somehow better for Royal uh, to pull three SCVs off of the line to fight the gas, to kill the gas uh, later on, rather than just taking the gas a little bit earlier. Um, Looks like the Zealots are going to come in here, though. Getting blocked. That left Zealot going to get blocked. And he catches the one on top of the ramp. That was a really beautiful block there from Royal. I thought that the uh, first Zealot getting on top of the Marines was bad, but that actually turned out really, really well. 
Yeah, and also got the probe on top of that as well. So now there'll be a little trigger here for Yeah, Royal's gonna go. I thought so. I thought Royal's gonna think about that for a second and be like, hang on, I can just go right now. And he identifies that. He's gonna put the pressure on Bess right now. And Bess is gonna be a little bit in trouble. He's gonna have to retreat to find this other gateway unit to support this initial zealot. He's already got his shields shaved off. The other zealot's healthy, but without any shield battery or anything, this is a little bit of a worrisome force to deal with. And there is an SCV like a body block to help these Marines maybe catch this zealot. But it looks like uh, that's gonna be sh uh, chased away by the probe and zealot. So it's like the, no no attack is going to be committed to here. Royal's just putting a little bit of a scare into Best to make sure he made that additional zealot. And now it's going to be turning around. Oh, he did force out the forge there anyway. Best throwing that down a lot a lot earlier than he would have liked to. That's 150 minerals that can't go into a cybernetic score or anything. He's got a photon cannon now. So... Uh, forcing a lot of defense out of best here. This is not the game plan that he started out here on this map with. Like, he wanted to put on this zealot pressure, kill a couple of marines maybe, you know, kill an SCV or two. Uh, really slow down Royal as he's trying to take his natural, but Royal has navigated this beautifully. And once again, we're seeing one of the strongest Protoss pl versus Terran players we've got kind of not really get a lot done against Royal in the early game, which is really shocking. Yeah, no, it is pretty surprising. I'm curious if he'll, like, make a cut somewhere and he'll go, like, robo-less for a while and just use this cannon out of front to kind of secure that zone. Make sure there's no mines on his rally point and then just maybe go straight into Arbiter on, on two, well, like, two bases while he takes a third and kind of delay getting that robo for a very long time to try and uh, min-max his build to catch up with the curve in the game somehow. Mm, I, I haven't really seen that too much, but there's the robo. So he will be... You know, not min maxing here, just trying to get those units out, try to get that observer out. He loses the probe in the front, and he's got four zealots out here that do absolutely nothing against what Royal's got right now. He's going to start to pump out vultures here very, very soon and take control of the map. Oh, he does pick off that SCV at least, but these vultures are really not useful at this point, and we've already got three factories here for Royal. I think it's just going to be a push coming up here very soon. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a three or five tank push potentially coming out of Royal. Best is going to desperately break down some gateways now. He needs as many units as possible to defend against this. I mean, this one tank is not scary, but once there's like three or more tanks starting to be fielded by Royal, it's a, it's a lot more tougher for Best to deal with that. He's got any Dragoons out on the map right now. He's just got these handful of Zealots, and now he's starting to churn out a few Dragoons with range on the way. So he's really behind the curve right now. The ebb and flow of the game is totally off for him, so he's going to have to try and find some stability. And yeah, he's going to do a three tank move out with plenty of Marines to support this as well. Each Marine soaking up four of these Dragoon shots, so it'll be very hard for Best to challenge this. He loses all the shields on this Dragoon for free as well coming up this ramp, but does spot the incoming army at least, so he's now tipped off to this incoming threat. Has this cannon to help support, but with three tanks and all these Marines and Vultures support and some SUVs coming down to build turrets and repair, it's going to be really tough for Best to hold on here. I would venture to say it's going to be impossible. How the heck can he hold on against this? We don't even have observers to start clearing these mines right now. He's going to have to run units through these mines in order to, to make any progress. And we're already sieged up in the natural. We're going to lose a gateway as well. There goes one, one third of our production. How the... There's, there's no way. Bess is dead. Wow, this is looking really bad, so I don't know how uh, Bess is going to deal with this. You're absolutely right. It's looking terrible, unless uh, Royal makes some kind of huge blunder right now, which I don't think he is going to. It's like he's going to very tentatively shuffle up on this right-hand side and siege just to the left of these eggs here. Yeah, exactly. So not going to be putting himself in any like precarious situations, just keeping himself at bay, building turrets one at a time, laying down mines, not even putting his tanks in such a position that he needs to clear his own mines to get maximum value at this game state as well. Now Bess starting to come in and see if he can chip away also running over the nuts, but without the leg speed, he's not going to get the mine drags that he needs on top of these tanks. Going to be calling out GG, and that's two wins up for Terran already. Royal is just full steam ahead right now. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked. Look at the, the face on KCM right now. He doesn't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening either. This is crazy. You would think yeah. that... You know, Protoss has been getting dominated by Terran the entire season, where it's been absolutely the opposite. And now we've got a complete reversal here in the finals? What? Guys, we're going to yeah. jump into our next game, but this is craziness. Crazy. Well, Mini going to be sent out here to take down Royal. 
we got Troy as our next map, and these guys have some pretty heavy lifting ahead of them, Bisu and Mini. Um, definitely not the expected result here thus far. Both Best and Snow had all kills this season. Managing to take yeah. out the entire lineups, and now they've just been ragdolled by Royal. Yeah, they are showing up to the gym, and they're going to have to hit some personal bests, is all we can say. And uh, there's a slight pun intended there, because uh, I don't know, I've got a personal bone to pick with best right now after that last game performance. Not quite sure that that was, but yeah. Suffice it to say, the great ape was not so great and got squashed like a grape. So hopefully, Royal now can be dealt with by Mini, the little mini ape. Who's going to maybe have the dexterity required to deal with someone of a Royals uh, higher echelon play? The Wolverine Protoss here. Going to be sharpening his nails. Two gate. Going to be it sent out here. He's going to come after him with the blades to start this game. I was saying two gate off, sh off air just now, saying while you were away. I was saying like two gate is the way to play on Troy. And here we go. I'm happy to see it. This is exactly what I wanted to see to deal with Royal here. And I think this could be just the ticket that we need to see a little bit of a comeback here for Team Ape. Two gate. I mean, that's what I see every time I played on Troy uh, as a Zerg player. Pretty much everybody on the ladder going for two gate on this map. It seems not as popular with the professional players, but Mini's going to pull it out here. What can he get done with this play well? Royal's got a pretty decent setup on his side. He will have a, a supply depot here on the right-hand side. That's a, that's a pretty nice wall there. There's a lot of room to maneuver behind those buildings, but two cell production. I mean, you're going to be able to get on both sides pretty quickly here. And, you know, cut off the retreat, get over towards those assimilators. If he kills the assimilators, the game is just about over. So it's right. going to be on the Royal to try and stop that from happening. Oh, he can slip around the bottom side of this. That's not good for Royal at all. He's going to get over onto this left-hand side. And the next zealot that comes around is going to trap these uh, Marines and start to hit them from the top side. Wow, really great control here from Royal so far. And he almost loses the first zealot already. Wow. Beautiful SCV sliding there. All of the low HP SCVs got danced back to the mineral line, keeping uh, fresh HP SCVs only at the forefront. It's going to be losing his SCV putting the bunker, though. Going to be having to retreat to the supply depot. Has two body blocking SCVs to keep this going. Trying to desperately get this bunker online, but unable to do so. Despite losing the HP on that initial zealot, Mini with these additional zealots going to be putting a lot of pressure on. Royal right now has a lot of SCVs pulled off the line, trying to body block. One of the Marines goes down. Another SCV biting the dust as well, but this last remaining Zealot is dangerously close to dying. There is two fresh ones coming in now. Only three Marines remaining, and he's not going to be able to get a bunker up. So now the pressure is still on Royal, despite weathering the storm initially. He's going to be losing a few more of these Marines. Desperately going to be pulling up the SVs from this mineral line, but he's losing another Marine. Can't quite get it down into the hole with the manual move commands, and going to be losing that as well, and losing these other Marines to the southern Zealot. And now it's looking like he's going to be slowly overrun by the incoming zealots of Mini here. He don't, he's even making a nexus right now, so even if he does hold on, we is still going to be a little bit behind the economic curve going forward. Yeah, this is... I, I think that Royal thought that the uh, zealots couldn't come around the bottom side of this supply depot. That's kind of what I'm a feeling here from the, the setup, that they were supposed to be forced to run around the top side of the CC, but... The ability to sneak by there, he did a great job bringing SCVs up to continuously stop that from happening, but uh, eventually overwhelmed here by the Claws of Mini, taking him down. I'm sure we're going to see a Royal Revive, though, th if we end up getting to that point. He played so, so yeah. well in this series, but that's a death, I think, to uh, Troy, the map, rather than... Uh, to Mini himself. Absolutely, saying so, yeah, Royal's basically Deadpool there, and Wolverine stuck his claws into him. But Deadpool being Deadpool, I'm sure he's going to be back for the next film. Up next, Mini versus Sharp here on Radeon, and sending out that early probe to go ahead and put down a forward nexus once again, but not sending the probe out to look for Sharp. Unlikely that you're going to get a gas deal here anyway, so just going right. to keep that probe back at home for some mining. Uh, Mini is the kind of guy that really likes his min-maxing, so yeah, if he's doing some kind of like forward gateway pressure, he really will want to like make sure he squeezes out every little drop of minerals before finally sending out that probe scout. And this probe will probably be, yeah, this probe will be the one that scouts. 
He just wants to squeeze out every tiny drop of minerals that he can before finally setting out the scout just to optimize the zealot timings and making sure they're as crisp as can be so that when the zealot gets there, it's hitting that two seconds earlier that it needs to to really put the pressure onto the Terran player. Now, Royal's really stolen the show here today, but this man right here in the top right hand corner, Sharp, is insanely good at TVP. He is someone I've had my eye on for a while and has been in the mix for a very long time. He's kind of uh, at the pinnacle of his play right now. So we'll see if he's able to take down Mini here. He's already got his uh, barracks and gas, everything going smoothly so far in his opening build. And he's going to send out an SCV. He will spot this probe heading towards the top left. And he might be tricked here into thinking that, yeah, he might be down in the bottom left, but actually... A mini going to find out very quickly that Sharp is over here in the top right. He's going to find him and start to send those zealots at him. Yeah, and uh, look at this uh, moving shots from Mini as well. If he stays on top of this, it'd be really great if he can kill this SCV. Uh, getting uh, this kind of pick off on a Terran player is seriously frustrating. The one thing that uh, Terrans have a hard time with against Protoss is the early game scouting. So when you get players like this that are able to kill your worker while you're out on the map, it's so frustrating to deal with. And look at him go. He's already got that down to 20 HP, 15. Ooh, almost down to 10 as well. And the Zealot now intercepting Marine. He's busy trying to keep this SCV alive and now distracted. Going to be getting a few free hits on this Marine potentially. Almost getting caught on that egg and taking another free shot. There needs to be careful. Only two Marines available with an SCV to block here but does get past the SCV and there's no hole here that's close to the factory so if he wants to he can delay this factory a little bit but tries to get on top of the marines he knows there's a marine about to pop so he gets a free hit on that as well so not going to be getting the delay on the factory is many but being annoying nonetheless with this initial zealot they're going to get a few hits on the way out here he picks off the SCV as well nice pick up there for mini great block here though with the scv and he pulls it back before he loses it really good control here from sharp in the follow-up and looks like he's not gonna be able to sneak all of these uh marines through that gap but luckily that zealot was just low enough that he's able to pick it off all in one shot and he keeps all of the marines alive really really well done here by sharp only one scv total went down there yeah there's only one scv there but the only thing one thing that we can say about that is a lot of these marines are extremely softened up so it does kind of limit the the threat that this attack is now generating there is a bit of a style right now where terrans want to put on a lot of pressure with the first tank and marines and vultures but that kind of play would be a little bit more risky now for Sharp going forward. These Marines will not soak up nearly as many shots as they would usually. Now, even though they have very low HP, they still deal the same amount of damage. But really what their, their job is is to soak up as many hits as possible. So if they're unable to do that, we'll probably not see any attack timings from Sharp anytime soon as a result. True, yeah. Makes sense here. A well, big brain play would be to make a medic right now. Make an academy and make a medic now. I don't think we're going to see that. Instead, we're going to see some of these Marines going down here in the front with, with the first Dragoon and that Zealot. All of these Marines are one hit away. All of them at the same time. Kind of crazy. He's going to have to pull some SCVs and try to save this CC. The SCV is going to go down there. Um, and the Marines are just so low right now. He even blocked his natural with the pylon, bringing all of his gateway units forward here. Mini is doing a lot of damage right now. An unexpected amount of damage because of the low HP on those Marines, he's able to get this done. He will be placing mines right out in front of Mini's base, but he's starting to lose control of the CC area, and he needs that tank out here ASAP to, to deal with this and get that CC back uh, building here as soon as possible. Yeah, this game is a great example of how some tiny advantages can be leveraged against your opponent in the coming stages of the game. Even something as small as the HP on the Marines can be a huge deciding factor in the coming game state. So that's why StarCraft is such a hard game because not only do you have to be able to uh, adjust your play to work around these kind of shenanigans that are possible due to the weirdness of the game state, but you also have to be um, you know, able to also take advantage of your own and uh, create your own advantages out of thin air. And uh, someone like Mini, so good at these small skirmishes, like we see now, trying to find any kind of angle to use against his opponent, squeeze out any kind of drops of value out of these tiny little trades that he can force his opponent to take place. A little disappointed there that Sharp didn't start a bunker right away in his natural. Uh, as a result, you know the the 
small, really very cheap and easy solution to all of that aggression is just to have the bunker up a little bit earlier when you have your Marines so low. But trying to cut corners, trying to optimize, really puts him behind now where Mini is accelerating ahead. Sharp is just now getting his CC online and getting that mining up. This is going to be a tough game from here. Mini really has the, the ball in his court at this point. Well, but there is one small thing that Sharp has going for him, and that is Mini's being very cautious due to the mines out on the map. So Sharp's actually just going to roll right up to the door with a couple of siege tanks. And if he can solidify this position with a few additional mines and get these tanks sieged up, there is a small chance here that he can put a little bit of pressure on Mini. There's no by means the game is over right now, but there is a little bit of a window of pressure here where maybe Sharp can make something work. It's going to be right. Okay, he's in a little bit of a bad way now. I don't know what he's doing right now. I don't know why he sent the tanks in first. Now he's isolated himself and shut himself into this expansion of Mini. And he's going to lose both of these tanks. Right? But big detonation on that minefield. Whoa, so many probes dying to that spider mine. Can't believe my eyes that this attack is going the way it is. Still, though, this vulture going to be shut down overall. This is still, I think, slightly favoring Mini, but so many probes went down to that mine that I actually think maybe is a chance that Sharp's actually ahead purely because of the mine. Wow. That was a psycho push there. Sharp setting the tanks in first. Uh, I mean, Mini had so many Dragoons to fight that with. Uh, he did pull them back into the main right before that attack because he thought there might be some sort of drop play coming in. Uh, but he should have been able to wipe that easily, and he did wipe it quite easily. But the mine connection, that one huge connection on the entire probe line might be changing the fates here. We do have a bunker now. We do have a tank. I don't think we have siege mode just yet, and this is a problem because we already have that observer. The mines are going to be cleared out really, really quick here, and there's more than enough dragoons to take this fight. Yeah, he's going to have to be really careful here. Just eight shots on that tank is enough to kill it, and there's enough dragoons here where even if a few of them go down, he can just double volley this tank down, tries to get on top of it. Bunker's being targeted. Does get two dragoons isolated onto that tank. Could be able to pick that off and retreat out with the remaining dragoons. Sharp, though, very quick to react. Going to be catching a few of those goons on the exit. Lay down a quick mine as well to clean up the other dragoon in quick order, so not going to be using any additional units is Sharp, and actually kind of stabilizing. Hasn't lost a lot of workers as well, so still looking pretty good considering the game state. I would say that did even things out a tiny bit i would say that no longer is a uh, sharp looking as healthy as he once was a moment ago but still i think like sharp's looking pretty good going forward here this is a wild game already this is already better uh than the first couple of games we had in this series sharp putting up a good fight here but mini really firing back over and over getting a lot of damage in the early game and yeah i'm not sure who is fully ahead right now i want to say mini because of the number of tanks that were killed and the delay on the cc was so crazy but that mine you just cannot i just can't put a dollar value on that right now i'm not sure how many probes died there and uh, how much that delayed the mining and the game plan here for mini is is up for debate right now yeah, I think that was at least seven or eight probes that died to that mine. And at that stage of the game, it's just critical damage to the infrastructure and production capability of the Protoss player. It takes so long to churn out those probes. And usually you want to be ahead of the curve as the Protoss player. And right then at that moment, that put Sharp ahead on the work account. So as long as he didn't lose too much on the trades and the follow-up, he was looking pretty. But he did lose a few of those tanks, like you say. So it's kind of hard to say who's in the, the power balance right now. It looks like it's slightly mini edge still. And he is getting a little bit of damage in the main base of this Reaver. One of these tanks also dangerously low he wants to try and isolate this turret if he can take out that turret with one more scarab it's going to open his position that's why sharp's desperately trying to repair this turret he needs to keep that zone under control at all costs right now now he can come in and pressure the reaver with a few mines and siege takes now this turret has survived this pressure from mini will be a uh, basically not only outlived but we'll be able to start to squeeze the shuttle out of play with this goliath coming up goliath gonna come up here try to pick that off he's playing a little dance Back and forth on top of the high and low ground here. Pushing away those... Oh, he fi he waited just long enough. Oh, is he going to lose it? Oh, no. He was buying time, biding his time to try and get a uh, shuttle speed finish there. And he did get the shuttle speed, but not in time to escape the base. That is a rough loss there for Mini. Uh, after losing the Reaver and shuttle, I, I think that Sharp is in a much better position here. He didn't take too much damage from that. Uh, he didn't lose any tanks. He was very good about pulling each tank back as it was getting targeted by the Scarab. So 
Really great handling of that situation. He's going to take his third base here, but it's really going to come down to how smoothly he can grab this base and, you know, what right. Mini can do to try and slow him down. Yeah, I mean, the third base does... It's, it's a little bit deceptive how close this third base is. It's a long walk to, to go down here and take this third base. There is a very narrow bridge uh, adjacent to it, so a little bit hard for the Protoss to attack into it from the bridge, but the Protoss can come in here from this Bulldog angle. Anytime the Protoss... The Terran player tries to move out, the Protoss player can just unload his Reavers like this and start shelling the units with the Scarabs and start whittling down that count. So usually you'll see the Terran player very, very tentatively push down, much like on the map there destination maybe even a few tanks on the high ground to just slowly shuffle and creep along this cliff face to slowly secure this third base because if you do pull the trigger too quickly and try and move your all, all your army down in one go the pros player can just jump on top of you and take the game then and there that was a really weird engagement what we just saw there uh with almost nothing dying i think the only thing that died was maybe an observer uh, observer definitely died maybe a, a zealot as well but Everything getting pulled back really well by Sharp. I, I, you can see that he's he must have been practicing quite a bit against Reaver just recently because he's doing a great job of every single time he gets targeted by the Reaver, pulling them back and taking the least amount of damage possible from those. He didn't lose any of his tanks, and his tank count's going to continue to grow here. Wow. Even catching the probe in the bottom left is sharp. That's a nice little catch. Even going to be forcing four goons to come out and deal with that. Slowing down the expansion efforts of Mini. He wants to set up some gateways down there potentially as well. So slowing that expansion down is really frustrating. It's already 13 minutes into the game and Mini has yet to start his fourth uh, Nexus. So that's kind of a sign of the times right now. Mini is certainly behind, behind the curve. And with that being slowed down further, it's going to be a little bit frustrating for him. And now he's got to deal with a move out of Sharp, who's just coming barreling down this vertical axis in the center of the map, kind of putting Mini into a state of panic right now as he rushes back to his home base puts in a round of macro and then comes back out into the map with his a movement uh, to try and see if he can slow down the uh, the efforts of Sharp here as he's looking to try and isolate uh, Mini and get on top of the rally point. Gatching two of these tanks though that are left uh, straggling in the rear. It's a nice little pick up for Mini here. Currently ahead by 20 supply. Starting to lay down siege onto these vultures and goliaths that don't quite have the tank coverage yet. And just as the tanks get set up, he's now going to be shuffling back out into the open field once more. Still waiting on those zealot legs to kick him up. Some vulture run by due to the slow zealots. Going to be coming into natural expansion and starting to rain down on those probes with their fragmentation grenades. Picking up quite a few probe kills at this stage of the game. It's really going to slow down the economy. I mean, he's also going to be dropping down some Reavers and Zealots on top of these tanks, dealing with the open army of Sharping very cost efficiently right now, racing ahead in supply and putting um, Sharp right now into a bit of a retreat here. His tail between his legs. Not many tanks out on the field at all here, so... Ooh, this is scary right now for Sharp. I feel like the move out... I, did he not scan to see where the base was here? Because it felt like he was going to push down towards the center right that base that uh, is generally taken by the Protoss player is not going to be taken here. Instead, he's focusing on 6 o'clock in bottom left. And Sharp moved over to that position. He left two tanks behind. He lost those two tanks right off the bat. And at that point, it's like it's almost time to go home right, off the, uh, right as soon as that happens. Because losing those two tanks before the fight even occurs, man, it's really, really hard to take... Uh, a, a decent battle there and looks looks like Mini's just going to keep shoving forward. He's lost too many tanks. Sharp, I don't think he can even hold this position. He's done a great job with the Vultures running by, killing probes, slowing things down, but he just doesn't have the critical mass here, I think, to hold on. While wow, Mini going to back up. I'm surprised that we see Mini back off here because I really thought with that number of zealots, he was going to be able to break the third. Sharp going to be bought a little bit of respite here. He's going to be able to stabilize for a little bit, get some more tanks out, get some more mines up, get some turrets in front of all of this, and keep this third base alive for now. I think Mini's a little bit uh, concerned that, yeah, there's not a lot of tanks here for Sharp, but there is still a sizable amount of vultures out on the map, and he's worried that maybe his zealots will be gobbled up a little bit too cost-efficiently and then kind of lose his advantage, and he's worried about the counterattacks as well. Maybe it was smart for him to go in there, but I think he made the right call by not committing to the attack there because there was a risk of him just getting overrun by a counterattack, which is that fight have not gone his way. And now we can see, even with all these forces out, Sharp's able to put a lot of pressure on to these expansions and also be uh, in a good position to maybe catch some of these high-tech units if there's some Dragoons coming out onto the map getting cleared up by mines or maybe some straggling High Templars can get sniped by these uh, Vultures. It's one thing that Sharp's so good at doing is remaining active with these drop ships, with these Vultures out on the map and maybe catching some of these high-tech units to really take the, the fangs out of the army here. 
Oh, oh look at this. the probe catch here is amazing. He's going to get so many probes. And at the same time, he's going to be dropping into the base in the bottom left. This is so big brain right now from Sharp. He's going to, you know, find a spot here where he can run by these vultures and lay mines on the other side of this army so that they can't easily come and support uh, the bottom left base so that the drop can deal maximum damage. He already just picked off every single probe heading to the bottom yeah. left, so he's not sending in the drop just yet. He's waiting for more probes to be transferred before he sends anything in there to, to clean that up. Wow, this is, this is looking really good for Sharp right now, and he's going to put a lot of pressure on this base in the bottom left as well. There's a nice tank and a couple of vultures. There is a Reaver that's slugging it up to defend this and some units from the low ground. And there are also some vultures sharking around to see if they can come in and have a bit of a field day as well. But it looks like with enough Dragoons showing up, they're going to just wait their turn and stay out on the map right now and not really commit to anything. Uh, looks like they're just uh, they're there for fun. They don't want to commit to any relationships right now. But uh, maybe when they get a little bit older, they can start to think about what kind of engagement ring they want to buy these Dragoons. Oh, he loses the dropship. That's unfortunate. The dropship was heading home and then he unseized the tank to go and, you know, pick that back up and get it out of there. But... Uh, maybe lost control of that for a moment, wasn't paying attention, maybe something else caught his attention at that uh, second, and he loses the drop and the tank, so kind of rough there, but Sharp dealing that extra damage, this is what he's great at, this is his superpower, this is his ability to continuously harass with drops and vultures everywhere, finding those little bits of advantages, and look at this, we've only got plus one, plus one here for Sharp, at 17, right. almost 18 minutes in. So he's been really focusing on building up this massive army. But if this army doesn't do what it's meant to do, he's going to be in a bad, spot, uh, a bad spot. Great snipe there on the shuttle. He's got to focus down some of these Templar. They're getting too much value here with the storms. But look at that. Picking off a ton of vultures. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> zealots here. Forcing back the army of mini still vultures here on the field so sharp with this huge army is going to be making some progress right now but i am worried if this gets cleaned up uh, what mini can do running away with this game uh, there's just not those big upgrades that late game terran mech is not there there we go we've got plus two just finishing up here so Sinking up the push with the plus two finishing, that's fantastic play from Sharp. Well, plus two actually kicked in just before that fight, saying so that army was actually engaging with 2 1 upgrades during that fight, which is why the, the fight went so good for Sharp because plus two had just finished as the, the fight was starting. So now he's gonna have the kind of trades that he needs going for. Look at that vulture just dancing all day there. Our toast would be proud. As he tries to come across this, uh, this this bridge a little bit too haphazardly. He's just gonna get stormed to death. The matrix does go down. Even a storm on the vessels. A little bit optimistic there from Mini coming forward now, trying to put some phase disruptor shots down onto these tanks uh, on the periphery while this D matrix tank is just eating up so much. And now it looks like Mini is having a little bit of a trouble uh, dealing with this uh, due to the fact that these tanks are just getting deep matrix over and over again at the front he's looking like a little bit of a situation here for mini to, to have to figure out how he's going to handle this because he hasn't really got a lot left to work with he's got a few units left at his rally point but now that sharp can just come in and reinforce from the left these zealots are going to be dealt with by the vultures coming in now tank really living up to its namesake there tanking a huge amount of damage oh vultures running by into the natural again gonna get a ton of probe kills here and two templar as well Zealots are being dropped on top of these tanks, but this base is done for, and so many probes just fell there in the natural. This is getting really, really rough here for Mini with 108 supply. He's not going to be holding on too much longer, and Sharp is likely going to take this one away, man. He's even taking a, a fourth base over at the 12 o'clock, and there's really nothing Mini can do about it. He's just desperately trying to hold on right now, and I just don't think there's it's going to be enough, man. Even unseizing the tanks... While the, the drops are coming in here to make sure that he doesn't take Splash, Sharp playing brilliantly right now. Yeah, even had that tank target fired onto that Nexus to make sure there was no way Mini could save it with the D-Matrix on that tank as well. Just like guaranteeing the game state at every phase as much as he can. Very composed in his efforts. Doesn't want to risk giving any kind of counterplay to Mini and upsetting the current favorable game state. We do have a shuttle here at the 12 o'clock position. Looks like uh, maybe some uh, storm drops here could uh, you know, even things out a little bit, but there's not that many SEVs here, and he's very quick to react with these SEV pools here. So 
not the kind of damage that uh, Mini was hoping for. And even losing one of those high templates where he got back into the shuttle there as well. So nothing really going Mini's way besides killing a few of these tanks out in the center of the map. But this is the kind of thing that he needs to even out the game state so that if he can siphon off enough of these tanks, maybe he can make something work here. But if he does lose these high templates for free like this, there's just no way he's going to be able to trade cost efficiently in the current stage. Beautifully done by Sharp, handling that drop play uh, with stellar speed and reaction time just not losing any scvs at this point i mean even scv kills are really not that important um in this stage of the game really the army is the serious problem here for sharp uh you have to find some way to deal with this this massive tank wall and more probes gonna go down so much probe damage this game it's kind of insane no, it really is insane. Uh, Sharp's one of the best in the business at doing this in TVP. He's just always so active with his vultures from start to finish in the game. And he's always somehow, with the, the game sense of God, able to find these probes straggling out onto the map and like a homing pigeon, just like, you know, managing to find them. But now we see some shuttles moving up back over here. The, the barracks is going to see that though. And there's a rage foul as well. Going to be warding those away so they can't just sit in the dead zone above this expansion, have a field day instead. Though, here come the zealot bombs onto these tanks with a reaver as well. Trying to get some splash damage. Got loads of units on the low ground. Going to make quick work of that. And Mini just going to be in full desperation mode. Unloading these high templars in the top left to kill the wraith. And the, the shuttle's going to go down anyway. So now we've just got some straggling refugees in the northwest quadrant of the map. Are going to be dealt with in a short order. I think these um, these are some peacekeeping forces that have come over to here. I think they're uh, freedom fighters, but we know firefighters fight fire. So what do uh, freedom fighters fight? So food for four, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Our setup here at the third base. It seemed like Mini's idea is to try and break this location, but look at all the Goliaths just sniping down that turret or that uh, shuttle so so fast. No need for turrets here at all. The Goliaths are going to deal with that really, really efficiently. And Mini's push has already been denied. He's not going to be able to stop the third base here. Instead, Sharp is going to be the one looking to shut down some bases. He's moving forward. And if he controls the rally point of Mini, I think he wins. We don't have any gateways in the bottom left yet. Mini just hasn't had the money to support them. And look at this. We're 30 supply ahead, almost 30 supply ahead here for Sharp. I, I think he can do it. I think he can come down here and, yeah. and crush the rally point now. Oh, he can. He, but the thing is that he doesn't actually need to. Just by maintaining the game state, this becomes more and more favorable for Sharp. So he doesn't. there's actually no onus on him to do anything in this game. Right now, it's, uh, it's Sharp's game to lose, and he understands that as long as he doesn't make any blunders from this point onwards, he's pretty much a shoe-in to win this. He just needs to make sure he doesn't make any mistakes or get caught with his pants down. He's going to remain active out on the map with a the minimal of units just a single vulture right now picking off probes look at this vulture it's 24 minutes into the game and he's still managing to kill like five probes of one vulture like i mean this is just crazy unbelievable mini gonna rotate around a shuttle here see if he can get some damage on the bases that are coming over in the top left hand corner he's probably got a reaver in there or something something annoying here to throw in the face of sharp while he's trying to Get a few more bases online. That's a pretty good uh, connection here. I'm able to kill the SCV before uh, it finishes this CC. And that means that he's not going to be able to lift off that CC. And maybe could even get the kill on that uh, if he controls these Reavers correctly. And look at this. The Reavers here on the high ground just slowing everything down by quite a lot. And we've got a bust in towards this third base right now. But... I don't think that Mini can break through here, man. There's just way too much. Nice storm on the Vultures, actually. That was a great storm. That's a great storm on the left-hand side as well. So getting some great value here. Sharp trying to do the, the smart thing, like you were saying. Just maintain the game state and, you know, try not to take too bad of trades. Eventually, he should win this game. But, you know, Mini's starting to find some little holes in here. Some little cracks in the defenses around the map. And that's kind of the... The, the danger of trying to do that, instead of going for this push, the danger of just allowing the Protoss to sit and continue to harass you and play uh, the game out as long as possible, it's it means that there's going to be opportunities like this for Mini to uh, to kind of 
bring himself back into this game, but here goes Sharp now. He is going to come down here and probably contain the rally. So finally getting tired of all the shenanigans in the top left and over in the center right. He's going to bring his full army to bear now, try to shut down this rally point. Yeah, he's going to both knock out the base on the right here while also threatening to contain the rally point. So many is going to be really desperate now and just surging out onto the map with whatever units he can muster. Needs to keep sharp at bay. Sometimes attack is the best form of defense. There's killing a few of these SUVs in the top left with this Reaver. 12 kills on this Reaver thus far. There are some mines up here, but as long as he can have a good... He gets these now! Needs to be careful not to lose that Reaver to those mines. Does manage to escape with his life. Uh, sharp going to be repairing up that tank and... Now with the Wraith dead from earlier, going to be able to come down and rotate into this uh, 12 o'clock position as well. Getting between the two siege tanks does immediately kill the Reaver though. Not quite positioning the Reaver perfectly between those two siege tanks to avoid being shot. So unfortunately not finding any additional damage there. And look at this pitiful army of Mini just getting caught out in the open. Needs to storm and needs to storm now. Desperately not going to be getting the value out of those units as Sharp just starts to walk over him. Basically on attack move now with these 3-2 upgraded mech army. Not really worrying about anything that Mini can field right now. He's just got so many units on it. It's just, it's just basically a numbers game at this point, Sam. So. Yeah, this is a... This is a losing situation. Numbers game, like you said. Mini is gonna get forced out here pretty soon. The Even the greatest storms in the world, I don't think, can bring him back. That's a pretty good storm, though. Oh my god, another great storm. And he has a follow-up here for these tanks on the low ground. Four kills. Four dead tanks there to just a couple of storms. Pretty ridiculous. But relying on pure storm here can only get you so far. Oh, it's going to get him through this army here. Actually picking off a bunch of these reinforcements. Kind of insane that he's getting so much value out of these right now. <laughs> yeah, he's desperately trying to prove you wrong there in real time, but I still think the numbers game is going to catch up to him here. He is finally starting to lose all these probes in the bottom left. And being now reduced to just two bases worth of mining, while Sharp is still just churning away from three bases. GG finally called from Mini. And wow, the Terrans are looking pretty right now. It's going to be down to Bisu in this finale with just one revive in the pocket. Who will it be? Will they revive Bisu? Or are they going to pick one of these other players after Bisu? Maybe it never goes down to this absolute beast of Sharp right now. Terran taking another victory, executing another Protoss victim there in mini bisu now going to hit the field here in the top left hand corner on polypoid nice big map here for this final protoss player to kind of spread his wings hopefully he can put on a good show here and uh, break through the barrier that is sharp get us into a later series and i hope we won't have to use our revive already to bring one of these players mm. back but I, I don't know. It's so it, it's so worrisome. Who are we actually even going to revive at this point? Snow and Baz put on a terrible show, but they really do seem like the better choices right. here for a revive. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's a tough one, isn't it? Because both of these players, Best and Snow, are like experts in this matchup usually. But after that dismal performance, you, it'd be hard to be so confident with reviving one of them because you, you never quite know what to expect after that. So. It might be that we see Bisu smash sharp here and then it'll be like Bisu's going to be the man to carry the torch and whatever happens, happens and we're just going to revive Bisu and hope for the best and maybe Bisu can smash through sharp for like Anrush and uh, then it'll be like a, you know, just a Bisu versus uh, light showdown or something in the finals and we'll see what happens kind of thing. But yeah, I think it's going to be a little tough for Bisu though. I mean, I can see him beating uh, sharp and light, but I don't know how he's going to beat sharp, light and rush. I don't know if uh, Bisu is quick enough on the draw to keep Sharp out of all of his bases, by the way. Uh, thinking about the play style of Bisu and the play style of Sharp, right. I, I think that Sharp is going to be able to get in with you know, Vultures, Drops, and that type of thing. And I can't imagine Bisu is going to be able to stop them all. Well, no, Bisu is definitely going to be much more like super standard kind of meta play, whereas Sharp's going to be like trying to stretch him thin and like really tax his ta his task switching ability, and that might be something that someone Bisu, like Bisu will struggle with in the mid to late phase. So yeah, you're you're very astute in that observation, saying that could be a bit of an issue here. We're going to be blocking the SCV in the bottom right, this probing a little bit annoying and a little bit of a. Uh, diver a diversion going on now as uh, Sharp not quite sure what's going on but is going to be able to get in there and confirm exactly what's going on and that Bisu isn't in fact in the bottom right 
Yeah, just putting the damage on that SCV is pretty annoying. He sent out that zealot to the bottom left, knowing that that is indeed the, the location uh, of his Terran opponent. And he's just trying to get as much damage on the SCV as he can. He's actually getting the moving shot here and forcing Sharp to micro uh, and defend this pro or this SCV, try to keep this SCV alive while the zealot is just running up on top, right clicking that on some Marines. This is really, really tough for Sharp right now. He's got a micro on two fronts, whereas Bisu, I mean, he is going to be microing the Zealot, but what what are you actually doing to micro the Zealot? You're just right-clicking it on different things, and uh, really the probe is what he's going to be microing here. He picks off the uh, the SCV in the bottom left-hand corner, or bottom right-hand corner, yeah, excuse me. This is one thing I really notice a lot of Protoss players doing, because their units are easier to micro. They can get away with this kind of task, switchy way of playing and forcing the player into very sticky situations where they kind of have to abandon one of the mini games and focus on the other one and just force them into a prioritization. And that's what Terran players are so used to doing, is prioritizing the sequencing of what they have to do. They're not really good at task switching between two things. Look at that beautiful block on that Vulture! I've never seen anything like it! Beautiful play from Bisu, getting that great game sense from him to isolate that and get the perfect surround really impressed by him and also shuffling those two low hp zealots to the back as well letting that fresh one come in and take the brunt of the incoming gorse rifle fight off those marines as well with a zealot coming in reinforcing as well sharp is looking like in a world of hurt right now saying oh my god that was good that was insanely good from me we see that often um in games like especially pvp where the zealots can get on top of a dragoon as is popping up but we rarely ever see zealots capture a vulture quite like that and he's gonna kill a bunch of marines here on the ramp so many just went down there he will be able to bully these uh dragoon and the the zealot back here but he needs to get a bunker online asap because a second dragoon is about to arrive here we just don't have a tank yet he's been producing these vultures and now he's added on oh he's going for two fact he's gonna follow up with a two fact crazy crazy game here from sharp yeah, we saw a quick nexus out Bisu as well, and catching this Dragoon could be pretty big for Sharp. He does lose one of those Marines additionally, but with this second factory coming online, he'll be able to uh, churn out quite a few tanks and a lot of vultures and mines to follow up and attack here. Maybe put a surprise on Bisu, he's only just now throwing down his second gateway, so we'll be behind that production curve just a little bit here. There will be a few factory units out for a uh, Sharp here to give him a small window with advantage here. Just two Dragoons to this one tank vulture and three Marines with an SEV as well, so this is really heavily favoring the Terran player, especially with one of these Dragoons already a little bit into hull HP with the low HP, low shields as well. So there is a big window for Sharp to just come out and explode and put the pressure on Bisu. Is right now throwing down the third gateway and is getting this uh, Nexus online, but hasn't got a lot of gateway units to defend right now. Yeah, he went for Nexus straight into Robo. So the gateways are a little bit slow than the units are a bit slow here, but I, I like that he dropped two gateways right up after that so he will have the production capabilities he doesn't have to build off of all of those gateways but if he needs to he can cut probes and pop three dragoons at a time and with three dragoons at a time and this high ground here being used to his advantage he might be able to stop this two gate push or this two factory push excuse me it's all going to come down to control here as it always does sharp trying to mount this high ground here bisu gonna have to seed that to him immediately and he's dropping mines behind this, this is huge getting the mines behind this army right now and he gets the mine connection that is massive looks like he lost the vulture maybe to the probe like the probe just gunned that down but uh, i mean we're getting right up here in the face of bisu quite a few of these vultures have gone down and the the uh, Marines are pretty much all gone, so there's only two tanks here, but this push is not over. Rallies are coming across the map. Lightning fast here. He's going to follow up with the... Uh, I think the Vulture Speed will be coming online here pretty soon as well. We do finally have an Observer out, but the tanks are high enough in number that we can start to really bully these Dragoons back. Another Vulture going to go down here. The Probe's being pulled off the line. He's going to start to pick off these Mines. Mines all being gone here. The tanks are going to be shoved back. I think that Misu's done it. He's going to be able to hold on for now. 
Yeah, he's isolating these tanks and forcing them to the 12 o'clock high ground. I think, though, with enough skirmishing from the high ground, Ashley Sharp can maybe start to pick off a few of these goons and lay down mines with these Raiden vultures. So the attack hasn't quite finished just yet. And with the SCVs here, the body block maybe start to make a turret. This attack definitely will be able to continue for just a few moments. One of the tanks is so desperately low, to H low on HP, so he needs to be careful. He's trying to micro that one tank back and try and force a good trade at a BSU. But BSU's doing a good job of just targeting this periphery tank. And he's doing a good job of blocking those vultures from slipping in as well, barely getting those pylons down, stopping those vultures from being a nuisance. Instead, going to be forcing them to come over here and put down some mines. This one marine somehow getting into the main base of these two to try and scout what's going on. He's going to be taken out by that probe train. A little bit of a weird uh, interaction there, as uh, we now see Sharp starting to rally more and more units. And this is, uh, this is a bit of an issue uh, here for BC going forward, actually, because Sharp can try to take control of this high ground uh, mineral only area and try and skirmish from that, even though he is kind of like faltered in his attack efforts and can just start to reinforce this area over and over again and try to do a follow up attack. But if he does try and transition to a normal game from here, he's so far behind, so he does need to desperately put on some kind of pressure to be soon in the next minute or so. Yeah, he's going to try and get mines here, pick off this one. Dragoon as it's popping up. He can't be too cavalier with this tank. If he loses the tank, the entirety of the push falls apart. It's got five kills already. A sixth kill just coming down. Trying to run here into the natural against Bisu's five Dragoons with just Vulture. This is kind of suicidal. He does need to back away. Wait for more rallies before he can try to push the issue here. And Bisu doing a great job just cleaning everything up. I think that this is Bisu's game to lose now. Yeah, I think this is pretty much BC's game to lose. It, it, the expansion has only just now started for Sharp, and bc has been mining for a long time. It's going to be closing up that hole behind him as well. It's maybe going to lose this one Dragoon to his mines. Actually, no, it looks like he might be able to save that if he keeps microing it, target and firing down these mines. Well, it looks like, oh, okay, with this mine drag, actually, he does manage to save it, uh, funnily enough. So, even keeping that one Dragoon alive, everything's looking pretty good for, for BC right now. With this two base production and being able to deal with this uh, early aggression from Sharp, it, it's really, really tough for Sharp to have any kind of hope of holding on. Bisu, if he wanted to, could just walk up and kill this siege tank on the high ground as well. Unless he's seriously unlucky, which I doubt he will be, he will be able to kill this tank. Yeah, the tank's going to fall. That's it. That's got to be GG. We're going to lose the SCV on the low ground here, building the CC. And yeah, there's just not really much left for Sharp in this game. He's falling desperately far behind in the overall... Uh, worker count here in the overall supply count. Everything is favoring Bisu right now. He might even pick off this last tank. Not quite. The SCV repair going to save that. But, dude, I, I misjudged Bisu in this game. I thought he wasn't going to be able to react to the uh, Vulture run buys, but he's had a pylon in his wall every single time, and there's never been able, uh, you know, Sharp able to, like, run around behind these army... The, the army here and, and get in on top of stuff. He's just been constantly reacting perfectly, keeping Sharp off of his mineral line. And now with this final Reaver coming forward, oh, the mine connection as well into the mineral patches. This is brutal, brutal damage. And this Reaver is just going to go completely un uh, harassed here. It's just going to continue to break down the defenses of Sharp and finally takes him down. Bro oh, man. That's why we don't see two fact very often anymore. Yeah, it's just it's just so hard to execute against the pro gamers unless you really catch them with their pants down. Bisu just like absolute stellar control in that game and really on top of everything, they're not letting Sharp like you know getting into his, getting in and up to his usual shenanigans and just shut down by those pylon walls again and again. Really great play from Bisu. I, I think he is going to be the one to carry the torch going forward. I think the revive is going to be used on Bisu. Whatever happens, happens. And yeah, I think he is a strong contender here to take out Russian light too. Yeah, I think that Sharp got really thrown off in that game and uh, maybe tilted a little bit because of the the, the zealot capturing that uh, early vulture, yeah. right? He could have lifted off one of those buildings. He could have lifted the barracks. He could have lifted the factory. Um, but it looked like there wasn't an, you know, the position to actually trap that vulture. The vulture, it looked like it could escape, but it was just so perfectly done by Bisu. The surround with the two zealots picking off the first vulture. I think that right at that moment, uh, you know, Sharp just said, screw it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going all in. There's, uh, there's, you know, no way that I'm going to play this out in a long game. He's just too frustrated. He tried it, 
didn't work out. Beasts are going to keep going here. Let's see who Terran send out next. Is it going to be Rush or Light? That's coming up next. All right, Sharp. Succumbing to frustration there, I feel, in that game versus Bisu. Losing his first vulture, I think, tilted him off the face of the planet. He decided to pull out a build that has been thrown to the scrap heap of professional play. The two factory rarely ever works at this high level. It's super popular on the ladder. It's super uh, well used and loved on the ladder, but it's just not as potent as it once was in professional play. And Bisu able to shut it down pretty professionally himself. And now he's here against Light. We are on Citadel. This is, I would say, a Protoss favorite map. What do you think? Yeah, I, I would give it, I would give it a, a bit of an edge to Protoss here. I think it's just a little bit too good for a carriers and Arbor to play here. Even just like the recall onto tank play we saw, where Light had like a big long ridge line of tanks, and I think it was was it Light versus Bisu, where Bisu just like recalled onto the big light. Uh, was it was it Light versus Bisu? I I I don't remember. Yeah, anyway, well, we saw some crazy plays on this map available to pros players, so yeah, I'm pretty worried for Light in that regard, but I don't know. I mean, Bisu's not the best of PvT players. I mean, he's really good in PvZ and he's really good in PvP, but he's not always been the best in PvT. He has been performing better as of late, I guess you could say, but haven't really been seeing the kind of stellar gameplay out of him that I would like to see to be so confident with him so far. I think it was week one, maybe? Where uh, of this season where we saw light on this map get stomped, I believe it was by best uh, or mini, I can't remember, but uh, Citadel, it, it, I don't think that light is totally comfortable here. I don't think most Terran players are totally comfortable. We've seen some kind of switch ups, like things have started to evolve in this matchup where the Terrans are starting to create like that great wall of supply depots over by the third base in order to kind of cut off one area of attack, one path of attack, and then focus on just controlling that high ground ridge. Oh, he loses a probe already. This is the type of stuff I expect from a player like Snow, but Bisu totally capable of taking out an early probe uh, if it's not perfectly cared for, even by someone like Light. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I was a little bit surprised to see Light in this lineup and not someone like Mong. It's just Light is, I mean, Light is an ASL champion. He's got a load of experience, but he's not been performing so great as of late. And uh, yeah, someone like Mong is a full special. Look at this beautiful pro block from Bisu as well, guaranteeing the kill on that Marine. Beautiful play from Bisu today. And also going to be delaying this factory if he gets a little bit lucky with the bouncing of this SCV. Is this going to be an Artosis SCV or a Flash SCV? Okay, this is going to be an Artosis SCV. So we're going to be killing that in short order, thankfully. So Bisu is going to be happy about that. Uh, maybe he can uh, clap his feet together if he wants to borrow another page from Snow's book going forward here. Looks like uh, Light's in a little bit of desperation mode as well. Did he mess up the positioning on this barracks? I mean, the supply depot is too high. We can't make a little, uh, we can't make a, a place to defend here properly. He's going to be able to get through. No, he can't actually get through. Losing another Marine there, losing another SCV. Okay, that Marine is going to stand strong, but another Zealot coming in here. I guess we will have a Vulture out in just a moment, so it will back that away, but that was some good damage from Bisu. Bisu killed several probes. He killed several Marines as well. He's going to be feeling very, very nice going into this uh, early game. Yeah, pretty much uh, most Protoss players would be happy to take this game state. The only thing bad about it is the delay on the Nexus, but that's not really too, nothing to worry about considering the extra compensation we've secured with the early skirmishing and training. So most Protoss players would be more than happy to take this game state. So. It appears we're going to be losing this... Uh, Zealot out on the map. Okay, I thought that was actually the Vulture chasing. So that wasn't, that was the SCV and SCV got picked off. Man, we're losing a lot of SCVs and Marines in this early game. It's not looking right. good, man. I think no. Bisu is just with the the map structure being the way that it is and kind of how uh, favored it is, I think, for Protoss. This is going to get really, really bad here. If he's already started off in a bad way, I can't see him taking this game. Uh, you know, in a long one with the, this map. Oh, he saves the, the Zealot as well. That's crazy. Yeah, everything's going uh, Bisu's way thus far. Currently heading 10 supply. 
Uh, the, the, the CC timing's not too slow behind this Nexus. Uh, There's one thing Light's got going for him, but he'll also be able to pay a little bit of repair bill as well. Overall, I'd say this is going really Bisu's way, even killing that Vulture out on the map. Any Vulture that dies before laying its mind is a big loss for Light here. He's trying so hard to keep these Vultures alive to both put on pressure onto Bisu to keep these Dragoons back at home and not forcing out a repair bill. But at the same time, if he loses them, he's so much value is just being swallowed up and just draining down the plug hole and it will just make it harder and harder for him to get a lead in this game going forward. Yeah, he's going to place mines behind these dragoons, which is a really nice move. Maybe if Bisu walks backwards... Oh, he loses the bunker! He's not going to walk backwards. He's just going to go straight forwards here, diving on top of the tank. Oh my god, so many missed shots. He just missed six shots there. That was insanity. How did he miss so many? Well, he's going to jump on top of the tank. He almost picks this off. I can't believe how many missed shots that was. Now he's finally going to get some luck here. Another three missed shots. Craziness. But he wow. does eventually pick off that tank. The high ground really working to Light's advantage there. But still losing a tank already. Super, super bad for Light here. Can you imagine if that was Artosis and he's like, it was his, it was his, and he managed, managed Artosis like race switch to Protoss and he like managed to somehow qualify for the ASL and he was like close to beating Light and that was like the final tank he had to kill and he missed six shots in a row. Can you imagine him being able to keep his cool in the booth, guys? I don't. I think I, I think that headset's going flying. <laughs> oh man, just imagine if uh, Ter if uh, Artosis is playing Terran and the. Uh, Protoss missed six shots on his tank. That would never happen. He's not that lucky. Light got his four-leaf clover, man. He's got his rabbit's foot. I mean, he, he's brought everything to his desk right now. He's got his, his all his lucky charms dangling around his neck right now to get that many missed shots. 50%. 50% missed shot. You missed six <laughs> at the same, like all all six in a row. That's pretty insane. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. It's uh, that's like rogue tanking. You know what I mean? Like evasion tanking, right there, Sam. That's some meta stuff for sure. And we're gonna have a reaver coming in here, I believe, hitting this main base yeah. now. Bisu, totally open main base. This is his playground right now. He's gonna be able to kill. Yeah. A bunch of SCVs in this main. Yeah, this is an open uh, relationship right now for Light, so Bisu's just going to come right on in here and see if he can cause some kind of love triangle and disrupt the, the perfect harmony that once was this Terran base. But no, it looks like they were pretty solid and uh, they weren't just experimenting uh, on the, the impulse <laughs> of it and actually maybe are open to a much more long-term endeavor. So Bisu going to have to see if he can find his way into a more interesting long-term dynamic here going forward. I <laughs> uh, love the, the metaphor there. That's, uh, that's the curveball that's been thrown today from Shun. Always, always fun. But uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to follow that one up or how it actually tracks. And That's the point of the curve. <laughs> Visu here, I'm gonna start to clear these mines. I, I like the the uh, Gol pure Goliath defense. It works out pretty well in this case. Can be pretty tough to track down a speed shuttle without the uh, Charon boosters, and Charon boosters does take a very long time to upgrade. But you know, just having a few Goliaths in there instead of putting down the turrets, it buys you uh, a much stronger army without the turrets here and. Uh, a much more solid defense if you have the glass in the right place at the right time and they're not here right now he's gonna get a big shot with this reaver dud unfortunate not able to get any damage out of that nope 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 it's gonna be dud in it you're gonna be losing this vulture at the three o'clock as well but uh thus far i don't know i would Bisu's going to throw down more gates now. He's going to go up to five gates, six gates. Okay, so I think it looks like Bisu wants to squash anything that Light wants to throw at him right now. So he's kind of getting a read on Light and realizing, okay, this is going to be some kind of five-back push out of you. I'm just going to ramp up my gateway production right now. And I'm not even going to think about taking a fourth base just yet. I'm going to go all the way up to eight gateways before I even think about taking my fourth. That's a good plan. I mean... 
Light here is going to really struggle to take a third. He's going to be very slow, and Bisu is going to have a massive army to try and deny that. I think that's going to be the name of the game here for Bisu. It's just huge, huge numbers of gateway army. Some well-positioned drops, a few reavers here and there. And even with this five factory production, it's going to be very hard to move forward. It looks like Light wants to take maybe the, the mineral only. He's looking towards that base, but this is this is so hard to do because that base is so wide open. You can hit that with a very wide range, a, a wide angle uh, of attack, run into that position and really disrupt any defensive spot here. This is going to be so rough, man. We're 30. No, how many supply? What are we, almost 50 supply ahead, 40 supply ahead right now. Abisu's just got a massive army to crush this, and I don't know, Light's trying to take this at a regular 11-minute timing? Is that a mistake? I mean, I don't, it, it might, I don't, I don't think it is going to be a mistake. Using the map ge geometry here, I think that uh, Light, Light's going to be able to really abuse Bisu coming up here. The one thing he's going to be careful of is when he tries to contain this pocket on the next ridge line, Bisu can come here and stomp him, but catching this shuttle and Reva is going to be huge. He did kill only one of those Reavers. The shuttle barely escaping with his life, like 5 HP on that, and with these three Goliaths just waiting in the wings, it's going to be really tough for him to come here. Look at how many Zealots are banked up here for Bisu currently. 60 supply lead. He can just come in here and squash this. This is not enough bolts just to hold on to this on a frontal assault. Lights in the world are hurt right now. Storms as well going to be blanketing onto this Terran Metal as the side blades of the Zealots just clean sweep through the Terran army, easily buttering it right now and gobbling up that beautiful force in short order, racing ahead, doubling the supply, eclipsing the Terran player right now is Bisu. The power level difference is crazy. Hey, saying what's the scouter saying about this guy's power level right now? Light is just dominant or just getting dominated right now. Bisu, his power level absolutely spiking there, and Light taking him not as seriously as he should. He thought it was impossible, but he has bursted here over 9,000. We've got what 80? No, how many supply are we above now? 80 supply? We're double the double supply. The supply. Double that is the supply. craziness. Absolute craziness. Bisu is going to take this game, man. Bisu is going to take it all the way. And uh, I think he's earned his right to the revive at this point. I don't think anyone else is going to be uh, able to take that away from him. Even if Rush manages to take him down next game, I think we're going to see Bisu get revived. This is this is crazy, man. This is really, really good by Bisu and kind of an un or misunderstood game state really by light. Truly. Yeah. He just didn't know yeah. what, what was going on there. He he tried to push in a time when I thought I was thinking to myself and uh and saying it in the cast that this is too early to take this base right now. He can't even hold the third, not to mention try to push and contain the rally point. That was crazy. Right, yeah, BC completely outplayed him, and he he raced up ahead in his gateway count. He got the like one to five, one point five to one ratio of gates to factories, so he could easily match the production of light and using a critical mass of zealots. There just would never ever be enough vultures to be able to weather that. So uh, now we see the game state. Even though light is a uh, hundred supply. Bisu still double the supply. The only reason Bisu is not going to continue to be double the supply is because he's now maxed. That's the kind of game state we have right now. It's really rough going forward for uh, Light fans and Terran fans alike right now. Bisu might even just start to suicide into Light soon, just so we can clear up army supply to be able to keep this production churning. Clearing out the mines here, Bisu opening up a path. We do not have that supply depot wall here to try and help things out. We got some supporting buildings, some floating buildings here. He's gonna go ahead and drop the zealots on top of everything. Okay, he's trying to throw down that <laughs> that supply depot wall, but it's a little too little too late, man. You can't be th throwing down the wall as the attack is coming in. He's gonna get completely overwhelmed here. Doesn't really matter how well uh, Bisu controls right now, though he is controlling quite well. Uh, there's just way too many. There's just way too much. This is so much army here pushing through. He's even gonna kill. Stop and kill these buildings here with the Dragoons. He's going to kill the floating engineering bay. Maybe the barracks as well. And the Zealot number is just... There's just way too many. He's going to kill everything. Light is out of this game. He's going to lose all his SCVs here at the third. Storms. Clearing all of those out. Bisu. 
remaxing here as quickly as possible, taking more bases. Light, I think we're just moments away from him uh, leaving this game. Yeah, Beast Duke can afford to like trade up 30% efficiency and still come out on top. GG finally called from Light, and we are going to be seeing kind of the route that I thought we were going to have. Beast Duke carrying the torch and snuffing out Light and showing who really is going to be the race to shine brightly in this final set. And it's looking like it's going to be Protoss unless Rush is quick to the table and to try and flip it here. Getting the clapper there, Beast Duke taking out Light, man. How how do we keep sending light out in these uh in these these rounds here? How do we keep sending light out every single week? It seems like he just doesn't have what it takes to take on these Protoss players. We haven't seen many wins from him this season, and every single week he's participated in has been a loss thus far. Maybe we'll get a change up here. I seriously doubt that we'll get a revive on light if it comes to that. I think it's gonna be a revive on Royal, maybe on Sharp. We'll see you though. There's still one more Terran player here left to go. Rush is going to be coming out next. Well, I was scared that we were going to have a walkover series here. The Terrans coming out so strong in the early part of this uh, finals, but luckily we're having a pretty nice back and forth and a decent way to end this series this season of the KCM here. We're in set seven with one Terran player, one Protoss player remaining. That's, uh, I mean, that's that's about the best you can hope for, right? Yeah, I would say so. And uh, looks like Rush wants to really let you know that he won the ASL 17 using the ID of ASL 17 champ Rush. So he's uh, really wanting to flex that belt of uh, times old try and put the fear of God into Bisu, which will probably not be very uh, successful considering that Bisu's been around the block a, a hell of a lot longer than Rush. Well, we're in ASL 17 now, so he's not the champion of ASL 17. He does this <laughs> He does this every season, right? Like, last season, he was the ID ASL 16 champ Rush. Um, he's conceptually the champion. 15 champ Rush. He just, he just rocks that. It's like a confidence you know what i mean he knows that he's going to be the champion this season even if he's not going to be the champion in his mind he's already won and uh that's the confidence boost he needs that's the that's the uh the confidence that we like to see out of these players and rush here has been looking very very good mostly against the zerg though i i really rate rush as a, a terran versus zerg player Terran versus Protoss, he's maybe not as good, not as strong, but I haven't taken a look at the win rates from him for quite some time, so I'm not sure if he's uh, altered that by, you know, very good performance recently. Um, he is still a very good, like a really, really strong player in this matchup as well, so we cannot count him out. Bisu here is going to have a run for his money against this player, and we are here on Retro, so Retro... Let's talk a little bit about this map. It's pretty easy to cut off lanes here, and there's not too many bases that the Protoss can actually take, right? Yeah, I mean, it's very easy to... What, what, one thing that's really hard to do as Terran, though, is to attack up ramps. So, mm. a little bit like Fighting Spirit, in the vein of, like, it can be very difficult to get up these ramps into these expansion areas in the later stages of the game, and uh, they also uh, can also be quite uh, easily recalled as well. It can be hard to, like, have the unit flow required to uh, effectively defend in certain stages of the game. So, uh, yeah, it can be a little bit tricky, but one thing is to say is that... The, the, the center is fairly open, but not as open as maybe it would appear. But it does allow for the Terran player to take the center as his fourth base. Use that as a bit of a mineral uh, mineral supplement to keep the vulture production going. And both attack and defend at the same time. Take control of the center and launch attacks from there in the mid to late game phase. One thing to mention about this map as well is that the positioning here for Rush is not the greatest. We want to take our third base. Uh, at the, the the easiest location to take, right? Which is going to be the 6 o'clock. However, oh wait, hold on. Am I getting this mixed up in my head? I think this is actually the better base. Okay, okay, hold on. Um, 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock, I think, have the, the better ramp set up uh, than 9 and 3. The the ramps, the, the, the difficulty is taking the high ground, but 
the the ramp positioning is what's important here i think i'm getting it mixed up in my head right now but uh the ramps at 6 and 12 are much closer i think than the ramps at 9 and 3 yeah, they are. You're correct. And that's, uh, you can control those ramps from the, the low ground as well as a result. So it can be easier to both defend and attack as the Terran player. So slightly more of an advantageous position to go for if you can choose those as your, both your expansion or a target to attack later on in the game. Right, so this is a bit of a better situation. Than that. There we go. Okay, we can see there on um, the 12 o'clock. Look at how close those two ramps are. You can put your tanks at the bottom of the, the one ramp, and then you can cover the other ramp. That's a huge, huge deal for a Terran player uh, when you're trying to take one of those bases. So we'll probably see Rush uh, move out and take that third pretty early on and then defend his bridge and that area to just take that nice, easy third on the high ground. It's very defendable. Um, assuming we get to that point, of course, Bisu is going to have his time to try and deal some damage here early on. And actually, Rush is going to start to move out with his Marines not really taking any damage from that early game Zealot. He's feeling confident right now to push with this one tank, maybe force a response here out of Bisu. Bisu, you know, maybe throwing down some extra buildings he doesn't want to, maybe throwing down an extra gateway or something, you know, maybe missing a probe or two to try and sneak out a couple more units. Uh, just in time for this attack to come, but it's not coming here. Rush is just going to back away and get prepared for the next stages of this game. You know, those kind of like early game movements are actually becoming more and more uh, common for Terran players recently. This whole like one factory production, like just make a tank and then rally vultures and go kind of attitude has actually been coming into favor quite a lot recently uh, to kind of like force Protoss players to you know not make too many cuts in the early game and not be as greedy as they might would like to be and if they are being super greedy usually they'll only have like four or so gateway units to defend and you've got a, a tank vulture and the marines and uh, the ability to lay mines so it's actually not that scary to deal with and you can put a lot of pressure on early games so sometimes now just by moving out in the early game you can kind of scare the Protoss player a little bit this probably would have been the best time for a push like this. Oh, a Citadel. Ooh, okay, just, okay. just because there was only one gateway, I think, on that high ground. Um, it's only pumping off of one gateway. Uh, you can get a lot of damage done going straight into... When the opponent's going straight into Robo off of one gate, you can get some damage done with those early type of attacks. The Marine tank pushes right. with a rally of vultures. But, you know, he decided to turn around there. He has mines over at the third base he's got good vision um he just doesn't want to take any hard risks here and now there's enough dragoons to definitely ward away any attack like that we have the observer out here as well and i'm really curious about the citadel man what is this going to be is it uh, two gate uh, two, two, two base stargate two, two base stargate with the yeah just yeah. follow up into um going straight into our uh arbiter tech here off of two base that's kind of crazy it's not something we see very much anymore. It used to be really popular two base arbiter, but it's fallen quite far out of favor recently. Yeah, you don't see it a lot, but um, I mean, Bisu's quite good with that style, so he's going to pull it out here and hopefully give us a good game with it. You'll be taking this third base in a quick succession after getting that tech online, so he will have his three base production up, up and going once that arbiter starts to be produced. So it's a very modern way of doing it, but. Still, though, it's not usually the, the norm to go for a play like this, and Arbiters don't typically give you the kind of high potential value you want them to. They just give you a, a high expected value. So they, they will give you reliable value, but not necessarily the kind of like scale tipping uh, tempo that you need to win some of these more crucial fights. Usually the storms and shuttles usually providing that. One thing I can say about Arbiter on this map is very good for clearing out bases uh expansions here because these right. bases on high ground Absolutely. they're very hard to defend against uh recall and basically you just recall on top of maybe the six o'clock or whatever even if he's got a bunch of defense up there uh it's really hard to clear that out with rallies coming to to assist and usually it's just a dead base so i i kind of like the choice i don't know how well it's going to do against rush who's a very modern player who's you know one of the reasons why Arbiter play has fallen out of favor is 
that modern Terrans like Rush are just so good at dealing with it. And he even gets a scan. He sees everything. So he's going to know exactly what he's up against here. He should have the correct response for that. Yeah, he's going to be uh, ramping up the pressure here momentarily. Once he's identified that, he's going to know that there's a little window here to be as aggressive as possible. He knows that the, the amount of gateway units will be limited from Bisu, so he can both attack and defend at the same time. While well, setting up this 6 o'clock here, but... Who knows? Looks like Bisu, if he remains active enough with his army and keeps track of this army with his observers, maybe you better keep him a little bit too skittish to come out just yet. Although it does look like he's finally now getting the confidence that he needs to come out of his shell and start to put the pressure on like he needs to. But he still seems to be hesitating so much. I'm a little bit confused right now. Seems almost like he's considering just like reserving to playing out a longer game and doesn't want to even attempt putting the pressure on the Bisu hit. Maybe he feels like there's too much of a risk to come out onto the map right now and he, uh, he's just, yeah, like, I don't know, for some reason he's a little bit too skittish, I think. Interesting. Well, Rush here is going to set up back at home. He's going to have his third base online. Um, like I was talking about earlier, it's pretty easy to take this one. See the tank on the low ground there able to cover that ramp on the left hand side so very difficult for the protoss to get in with the conventional army but with the recall he might be able to do something um, pretty significant here he might be able to cut down that base and he will have uh, recall a lot faster than you would in a normal you know, arbiter base game with that two base arbiter you start to gain that energy a lot sooner so We'll see what Bisu wants to do with that energy coming up here. Will he be, you know, going for that really fast recall? Will he just be going into uh, some stasis here to ward away the army um, while taking more bases? It looks like he wants to get more bases online, but R Rush kind of shutting that down for now. He's going to continue to harass with those vultures and hopefully slow down the upper left being taken while he's getting into these big upgrades and big mech army. Yeah, the, concept, the conceptual champion Rush right now, doing his best to slow down these uh, expansion efforts of Bisu, but I think he's finally now being thwarted enough that Bisu can start to set up this top left bases uh, unimpeded, so now we'll also be having some energy starting to stack up on these Arbiters. It's going to be another minute and a half or so until there's enough energy for a recall. So we might be seeing something like that happening at the 6 o'clock base uh, in the next coming stages of the game. Because I think Bisu is going to be itching to get things going here now that he's got this tech online. Yeah, just another 40 seconds here before that recall is ready. A lot of zealots, a lot of goons ready to go. Actually, a surprising number of zealots here. That's so many. Will he go for the main? I think it's always best to go for the expansion, the outlying expansion. It was... Traditionally, the case that players would often go for uh, recalls into the main, but I think that mentality has changed over the years, and now we're uh, more favoring the recalls on the, the bases, and I, I think that's a good switch up. I, I, I don't know. I don't know where Beast is going to go with this. He's rotating over towards the, uh, the main. He's got enough energy here for a stasis, not quite enough for a recall. As he starts to push forward here, there's definitely not an EMP ready. He's going to come into the natural. Does he have... What does he have here? Is he going to go for a stasis? What are we doing? Running right into these... Oh, there's a recall. Zealot recall here on top of the tanks. The boys in the comments are going to be so happy. They're always calling for this. Finally, we get a recall on top of tanks here. He's going to be able to clear out so many tanks right now. He's getting right on top of the natural. I think he needs to pull back and away from this, though. There's just tanks on high ground on both sides of him. Over here at the 6 and over at his natural. Tanks on high ground are going to hold strong here for Rush. And I don't think Bizu can break this. Maybe if he brought his whole army immediately after that first fight. Uh, to over here to the 6 o'clock, he might have been able to break that, but it seems like Rush is going to be granted enough time to pull himself together to be able to stop that from happening. Well, I don't think Bisu needs to break him at all. I think we need to keep resetting the tank count over and over again, which we did definitely accomplish that feat. Just a few handful remaining tanks now. Bisu going to be slowly setting up the remainder of these bases, going up to 5 base worth of production, while still only 3 going to be churning. 
for Rush here. He does have his plus one weapons online with 2 1 on the way. So eventually, we'll be able to start to trade better. And also, with vessels with EMP, going to be providing more utility in the upcoming skirmishes. While these two still going to be more or less remaining on the same kind of tech here, just pure Zealot, Goon. Um, High Templar uh, Arbiter probably for the more or less the remainder of the game. So, yeah, I think right now uh, Rush will just slowly but surely solidify a stronger and stronger chance at winning, but Bisu is certainly going to be in a very commanding position for the next few minutes. We're going to see another wild play like that. That was crazy. I was not expecting a recall quite like that, but it did seem to work pretty darn well. You're not going to have a bunch of mines to deal with a recall on top of your tanks in the army. That's just not the way that Terran is played. So it's kind of a safe location to recall onto. And it deals a lot of damage to the, the tank line. So resetting that tank count was great. But now look at this. Rush ahead in supply here. Fleet beacon going down. More gates and an extra cybernetic score. He's going to eventually switch into carrier. If Rush doesn't come out very soon, he will be getting into that tech. And that's kind of the late game plan here for Bisu. Right. Is Rush going to figure that out? Or is he going to sit here and be really passive, try to take a fourth base and eventually get overwhelmed by carriers? Well, that remains to be seen. Well, Bisu's identified that it's a strong possibility. That's exactly what uh, Rush wants to do. And that's just sit passive and take a fourth. And now he's going to give himself the win condition of putting Rush on the clock with these carriers. So uh, now going to be forcing Rush out of his hidey hole if he wants to take this fourth base and come out onto the map and deal with the potential carrier threat if he scanned that yet, which I don't think he has. It's going to be probably some time until he scans that top left and identifies the and confirms the fact that it's going to be a carrier switch. He's got about three minutes or so until that becomes an issue he's scanning the main base he sees that the arbiter tech's still online and churning so that's not going to ring any alarm bells for him so uh yeah so far everything just seems like you know business as usual for as far as rush is concerned and he's just going to slowly push out onto the center of the map and not really be aware of the, the overall threat of the game state beautiful emp going to be traded with the uh, stasis there's one interaction that you see so often is those two spells going off on each other to kind of cancel each other out that's a both players trying to make value and get use of this utility as much as they can one important aspect here is that we saw the scan in the main and he saw the uh, cybernetic course spinning there's no reason to get plus one attack on the arbiter oh nice emp actually getting rid of the highest energy arbiter here and i'm a little bit surprised to see bisu like setting that forward why not send the arbiter that has no energy forward to try and eat the EMPs. I guess you can check if you click the Arbiter to see how many shields they have. Uh, you'll be able to know that that's the, the Arbiter that you EMP'd. But sending right. forward the high energy Arbiter was really a rough decision there for Bisu. And now he's going to get another EMP here. He's taking the fight with the army. And man, this is not looking good. That's so many tanks, so many vultures. And... We're not really getting the greatest uh, uh, stasis here. Not buying enough time, I think, for these carriers to finally come into play. No, I mean, but the plus one doesn't necessarily guarantee that he's going for carriers. That could that could be a mind game, or it could be just to, like guarantee a late game switch. It doesn't necessarily mean the the pros player is going for carriers, so it doesn't like necessarily confirm it, but it does kind of like make him think about it at least. But now we're going to see like full carrier production, all, all hands on deck, every single star. And now he sees only the two arbiters being like at the rally point. He didn't see the two carries that just popped out of it. So he might just think that that plus one weapons is just for a late game switch, potentially. And he doesn't realize that right now there's already carriers that have been made out on the map. So Rush might be aware that there's going to be carriers, but he might think that he's only just now starting to make them and that he hasn't already got five out five carriers is pretty darn strong especially with that plus one already being done plus two is on the way here some vultures getting in to get some harassment done on this center left base but this is not an important base i don't think for bisu right now having this is kind of a a bonus at this point and looks like with the the dragoon holding everything off with that one single Cannon is going to be able to keep the probes active and mining over at that base and secure his future here. All he needs is minerals, a little bit of gas here to keep making the uh, carriers. And look at how small the the uh, Protoss army is right now. He's only got just a few Dragoons and a couple of Zealots. That's the biggest tip-off 
uh, of everything, right? Having those, uh, having that tiny, tiny army right now, you've got to know that there's like a, a big carrier change coming here. He's going to scan. He saw the carriers, the tail end of them. He knows, he knows. He's going to start to bust out a ton of glides. He's taking the middle of the map, but this is so many carriers now. And most of his supplies in vultures and tanks. I don't know if he can even build any Goliaths at this point. He's going to lose a lot of army here before he can, you know, fully switch into Goliath production. Absolutely, say, and he's going to lose like at least half of this army at this rate. It's going to be really painful. They're going to be like ducks in a barrel as they start to make their way out onto the map right now. One thing he's got going for him is that right now it looks like uh, Beast is being a little bit hesitant with how he wants to engage. I think he's a little bit concerned about the EMPs onto the carrier, so he wants to make sure the Arbiters are always in position to get the stasis off first. So, yeah, I don't know. It'd be a little bit weird situation now because Russia's trying to keep fluid on the map to try and avoid these carriers so that once the carriers go to get on top of the Terran production, you can just use this entire army and try and shove it down Bisu's throat and have this small window of counter-attack base trade scenario where he kind of like cuts off some of these bases to prevent the interceptors from being made and also limiting the production capability of the Protoss player. And he's going to get a lot of these factories taken out by Bisu. Bisu wants to force the issue now coming into this bottom right quadrant with these carriers trying to get on top of the Terran production see if he can cut off the head of the dragon before he can even produce any of these Goliath to replenish from this army. Right now, there's not a lot of Goliaths out on the map, just mainly tank and vulture. So Bisu's going and killing off all the production before he can even get into remaking the army supply into Goliaths to even deal with this carrier threat to begin with. Yeah, it's going right after the production here. There's not a lot of bases on the map for Rush right now, so he doesn't have any other location to try. Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh that recall though. Um, I think a stasis on the ramp would be way better in this situation. What do you think, Shun? Yeah, that was not the call there. The stasis on the ramp was probably the play. And uh, yeah, he's just throwing away some assets unnecessarily. And uh, he might actually be in a little bit of hurt if he can't come in here and get on top of this production. Looks like he's running away. And this is probably the worst case scenario for Bisu going forward now. Looks like Rush might be able to do it. He's also mining in the center like we talked about earlier. Looks like Bisu wants to come and uh, try and get the two birds stoned at once as he comes in there, picks up some science vessels, kills some of these Goliaths, and maybe comes and shuts down the mining here in the center while also cutting off some reinforcements maybe he can get enough done here and they keep the, the plate spinning enough to kind of find some value while also setting up the three o'clock base but he is losing the top left he's basically going to be drip feeding these interceptors with some long distance mining for some time it's not looking good for him right now saying this is like the the one way that he could really lose this game he's got so much so many cares right now he's gonna recall storms on top templar on top of these uh goliaths right now a really funny funky army and a way to play right now is bisu's uh, game plan right now very very strange moves out of him right now but he's running on almost empty he's got hardly any mineral income right now his only base that's mining is center right and it's very close to rush it's potentially it's possible that he could just walk over here and take that out the carriers are in good position to try and keep that alive for now but i mean he's got to make something happen here he kills the base in the center at least but rush still has a lot of income he's got a lot of supply he's 40 supply ahead right now starting to lose some of these goliaths he's got some storms here to maybe clean up these goliaths but so many interceptors are being killed right now and he just can't afford to replace them yeah, I hate to say a Toda Seal saying, but a Toda Seal looks like Bisu wasn't able was able to deal with Sharp and Light, but wasn't able to deal with Rush as well as exactly as I was uh, anticipating, and I wasn't too happy about being right about this, but it is looking like that saying he's going to be a target firing his own pile on there, keeping the interceptors deployed by um, making sure his um, carriers are always on move command so the interceptors don't go back inside so that they are able to jump on top of any target they're given. Beautiful storms on these guys, they try to make their way up to the high ground, actually getting some good trades there with the, the few skirmishing units that he's got available to him, forcing uh, Rush into a bit of a um, sticky situation. He can't quite come up here and shut down this final mining base, and 6 o'clock is becoming mined out. And he's long distance mining the center as well. It's a very precarious situation for both players here, but it looks like there's still a critical mass of glass that he can come in here and shred through the remaining interceptors of these two and take the fangs out of the basilisk, and now he's going to come in here like Harry Potter with his sword of Gondor and just slice through him, Sam. <laughs> Harry Potter's sword of Gondor 
Minotaur here is a very delicate army. If we get some good storms on top of these Goliaths, you could absolutely take this out. Oh, he gets one EMP off on the Arbiter, but exchanging that for a Stasis there, managing to pick that off, or pick off some of these uh, Goliaths, put them out of the fight at least, uh, if not killing them off outright. And Looks like Bisu gonna have to fall back here once again. He's got some storms remaining. He can throw them down onto the glass as they run up this ramp, but long distance mining here. Rush, why doesn't he send? He should be sending a, a oh my God, the storm. There it is. That's the storm. Oh, that's the storm we were talking about. Damn. Oh, wow. Okay, he kills so Damn. many Goliaths there. Uh, why isn't he sending a CC down to the bottom left? There's no way that the carriers can get to the bottom left to deal with it. They have to stay here and fight, but he's going to be mining from the middle. A little bit of mineral income drip feeding into Rush's uh, base here right now. Sending out some more Goliaths. He's got 123 supply to just 88, but 88 worth of carriers is crazy, crazy supply right now for Bisu, it's such high value supply and he's actually starting to pick off all of these all, all of these Goliaths. There's just not enough left. There's just not that many interceptors, but he's jumping on top. He's gonna get one carrier. Okay, that's a mistake from Bisu. Losing two carriers now, th these are everything in this game. There's no way he can reproduce carriers right now. Oh, wow. He has enough interceptors deployed though that he can still get on top of the remainder of these Goliaths. And we've just got a drip trickle feed of minerals here for Rush. And uh, right now, it's slightly more mining for Bisu due to the more optimal pathing on that three o'clock base. So is able to outproduce uh, on interceptors to um, Goliath ratio. He is losing a few of these carriers a bit haphazardly, but he has dealt with all of these Goliaths and is now gonna get onto the mining of Rush. Has he done it? He's picking off the command center. The madman has done it. He's done the impossible. He's taken out all three of these Terran players, it looks like, so far. Uh, it, it could be, it could be somehow there could be a turn of events and he gets on top of these remaining carriers and gets uh, two or three carriers here. But I don't think even if he does kill two or three these carries he'll be able to win still so i think bisu's done it and i've never been so happy to be wrong saying because now we're going to see a nice little revive on one of these players probably a royal or sharp and we're going to see some epic finales here that is craziness i can't believe that rush took the middle again why did he take the middle take the bottom left for god's sake right. There's no army on the field. This is it. This is everything he's got. He only has carriers. And you take the base that's the most accessible to him uh, to harass here. He can, you know, he doesn't even have to get out of position uh, to defend the, the uh, center right. If he built the base in the bottom left, if the carriers go to the bottom left to deal with the base, he can easily come in here and shut down this mining. But now look, he can rotate back around and just easily clean up this army. This is a terrible decision by Rush. It was a great game, but I think it's just about over. Oh, he's going to pick off this last carrier. It's not over until he says it's over, until ASL Champion 17 Rush says that it's over. It is not done. He's going to jump on one more carrier. Can he kill it? Oh, he pulled out the damage carriers. These are so low H. So low HP. He's going to keep them alive, though. Killing off the Templar is big, but there's just five carriers here, and there's two goons and some storms ready to take them down. Wow. I mean, look at this theoretical god of a player right now. <laughs> Just conceptually destroying Bisu in this game. Going to be tapping out nonetheless, though. Bisu proving Jun wrong and doing the impossible, taking down all three of these stellar players. It's going to be forcing out a revive. And yeah, I can't imagine who it's going to be. Maybe it'll be a rush for the rematch, or maybe it'll be Royal or Sharper. I'm not too sure who's going to be revived, but Bisu's on fire right now. And I think he's going to give a, us a really good game no matter what happens going forward here. I think it's going to be Royal. I don't know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments down below who should they revive as we go into this next game. Crazy. Crazy. I thought that Visu was going to lose that 100% when he went into the main base, right? When he went into the main, he didn't kill the production. Rush killed all of his bases out on the map, aside from center right. And he kept, you know, he, he kept him out of his main as well. He he won on all fronts, and Bisu still managed to take it back. Man, the, the carrier, it just cannot be underestimated how strong that unit is. Absolutely wild. The storms as well were fantastic. A great game there for Bisu. But seriously, some, some serious mistakes from Rush, man. <laughs> Making right. some really big errors.
Yeah, you should just take nine o'clock even. Even bottom left is not necessary. You can actually take nine o'clock and then when the carriers deal with that, you can just counterattack three and the carriers are out of position to both get on top of the production or defend the expansion at three. So it's like a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. No reason, no, not necessary to go for it center, but he went for it anyway. The, the worst mining base on the map. Literally, it's so bad. <laughs> the... The efficiency is absolutely god awful, but he went yeah. for it regardless. Um, who are we gonna have that revive, guys? Let's find out. Okay, Royal gets revived here. Not a big surprise. He was dominating in the early part of uh, this week of the KCM, so glad to see him being brought back here. But Bisu has been on absolute fire. Taking down Rush there in that last game in a very lopsided finish. That was like really, really chaotic game. Probably one of the best uh, TVPs that we've seen so far. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was really back and forth. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. We didn't see a, a more further away base taken by Rush there in the bottom left or 9 o'clock. But uh, it is what it is. We're going to be seeing an interesting finale as a result between Royal and Bisu. Though Bisu does have a revive in the pocket. So two lives for Team Bisu right now as he beats the Great Apes to victory. Feeling very confident right now throwing down this pile on, on the low ground. Going to be using a forward gateway and gas steel combo to put the pressure on Royal right from the start. The Royal was uh, no slouch. He's dealt with this uh, a million times over. He'll probably deal with it quite efficiently in the early game. It's going to be this mid-game skirmishes that I imagine will decide who's going to win here. Yeah, I'm afraid. I I'm afraid here for Bisu on this map on Dark Origin. He's going to try something too fancy, and this is cool Maybe, yeah. right now. Look at look at what uh, Royal has been able to do. So he's been able to block out this SCV for a long time, but it will f finally sneak by in the end does manage to grab that gas. So th this is kind of a Sharp way of playing. Sharp really popularized this. This is what he started doing, was blocking the ramp with the SCV in order to get the right. gas up. Uh, not quite done perfectly here by Roll. And, and what I was saying was uh, that I hope that Bisu doesn't go for something really silly and fancy, like a proxy weird shenanigans uh, game on this map, because that's kind of how both best and snow fell in the early uh in the early parts of this series is they were trying to get too fancy and royal is just so solid at defending everything um i, I hope that the same thing doesn't happen to uh to Bisu here. Yeah, Royal's just so super solid. Like, it, it could be just better just to play your A game and just play straight up against him and, and you know, kind of line up nicely with the ebb and flow and not try and, like, you know, get the better of him by, like, catch, catching with his pants down because, you know, usually he's, like, you know, he's, like, clockwork and he's, like, those pants are, like, falling to his, his ankles and being grabbed right back up again. He's going to be losing this SCV, though, to the particle beam of that probe. And also uh, committing a few SEVs to killing this assimilator to get that a little bit quicker online to go straight into this uh, factory production. It looks like BC might come in here for another gas steal, maybe. Yeah, not going to be able to get that. He went a little bit too early. You want to go in right as the gas is about to die. And of course, you can see how much uh, health this left on that. So it's a little bit unforgivable that he sent it in so early, like halfway through the, the health points on that. And when he sent in the probe, but you know, Bisu, he will just be backing off right now, grabbing his Nexus. It's really, really nice that he picked off the SCV there, um, by the way, because it would have been really nice for Royal if he could have thrown down an eBay uh, in front of that Nexus and, and slow that down a little bit. But uh, the fact that he stopped that from occurring is really going to help out Bisu in this game. It means his uh, Nexus is going to be right on time here. And even if this pressure doesn't go super, super well, and it looks like it might actually go pretty well here. He's jumping on top of the Marines now, getting a few kills here potentially. He got one. He's going to get a second, it looks like. Nice ring around the Rosie play from uh, Royal. But oh my god, all the Marines just died. Oh man, all of them were on low HP right up until the end. The probe got so many kills there. That was incredible. Dude, Royal walked that tightrope right up into the end and then threw himself into the abyss. What a crazy, wow. crazy turn of events here. Bisu now completely in control of this game.
Wow, absolute pandemonium right there. That probe like flicked the particle beam in between the Marines and got double finishing killing blows on those and quickly picked up two kills right before it got taken out. And now on top of these Marines are the last two remaining Zealots. SUVs desperately body blocking. Pretty good surface there. One of the Zealots about to bite the dust, but the other one's still got a full tank on HP. So it can still put the hurt on and trade some of these SUVs off and maybe get on top of this other Marine as well. That's dangerously low on HP. It would be as annoying as possible. Now and keep these Marines as far back in the main base as possible while this additional Zealot from the rally point can now come into the natural and maybe cause them some more disruption here. So many Marines have fallen. So many SCVs have gone down. Things are circling the drain here for Royal. The last hope of the Terrans. I mean, they've done so well so far in this series to actually bring this back after having such a pathetic performance uh, in the rest of the season. But this is a rough way to end and with a whimper here royal just about to be taken down i mean he's still got a play in this game but he is so far behind it is going to be a nightmare to try and bring this one back yeah i mean i was a little bit wrong about royal here i thought he was going to deal with this early game pressure quite uh substantially well and if anything he's done the absolute opposite finally we have a marine in the bunker at four five minutes and 44 <laughs> seconds hallelujah royal thank the lord god i don't know how we got to this but Unfortunately, we, we, we're having to deal with what we've got. And BC throwing down the robotic support. They're going to be going into Reavers for armory on the way. Maybe he can get into some Goliaths, a little bit of tank Goliath composition to maybe help deal with the, the shuttle pressure. Going up to four Goliaths, allowing him to two shot the shuttle. Maybe be able to afford him some kind of counterplay options and dealing with this forward pressure. But it looks like BC's going to come over here and uh, glitch some units uh, potentially behind the back here. Maybe uh, if he wanted to. Oh no, okay, he's just going to build some spider parts. I thought for a second he was going to come out here with the probe. And like glitch over some uh, goons in the back here and cause a little bit of shenanigans but it looks like maybe he's just gonna sit here and chill bisu sitting and waiting for a vulture to be uh tricked over that wall instead he thinks that maybe you know the only comeback potential here for royal would be to try and sneak a vulture out on the map and get some kills on some probes and just crushing every single hope here that royal could possibly have um, by making sure that he's got all the the T's crossed here, all the I's dotted. And Stargate, going to follow this up. Literally, Bisu can do anything. He can do absolutely whatever he wants at this point in the carriers. game. It's going to be carriers. Why not? Why not, Why not go not? for carrier? It's the, the ultimate killing machine for the Protoss against Terran. There's really nothing that gets more value and do deals more damage than a carrier, especially with upgrades, how quickly they can kill a CC or any unit of the Terran. It's um, it's a great choice here. I like it. It does give Royal maybe a sort of possible timing where he could get a come out and get some damage done, but it's still so such a slim tiny little sliver of hope here for royal i don't know if he's going to be able to hit that timing at all yeah he's going to come in here with the reaver as well the zealot tanking the first initial damage then he surges in with the remaining dragoons gets on top of the bunker SUV's desperately trying to repair one scarab's going to help pop that like a zit finally going to get it the second scarab follow up also killing two SCVs uh, for his efforts as well takes also hp down to one shot as well so quickly able to deal with that there's one remaining tank on the high ground about half hp but with four dragoons on low ground should have enough damage to push up and kill that and also get maybe a, a scarab off on this SUV train not quite able to get any damage on the SUV train but he's dealt with these terran mech units so cost efficiently uh royal there for a second got his tank right up to the edge and almost killed the Reva with some uh unseaged tank shots but luckily bisu slugged that out of range just barely in time to keep that alive and active threat in the natural expansion here oh man this is this is rough that tiny little sliver of hope i was talking about earlier uh it just doesn't even exist anymore it's gone there's no hope here for royal at this point the Reaver bust, just insane. As he's going carrier, as he's making these crazy tech switches, he's able to bust in the front. Uh, it, it's it's wild to me right now, the, the things that Protoss can do when they have a little bit of an advantage, how far they can push it. Trying to push down here against this 10 kill Reaver, 11 kill Reaver now. He can't just can't get it. He's going to lose a tank as well. Finally picks it off. But, I mean, Royal is just... 
out of this game, man. GG finally called. GG. Royal taps out. Bisu goes all the way. Beautifully done. Takes out everybody. Absolutely fantastic. That is wild. Did he just did he just all kill there? Yeah, I mean, I, I was talking about it earlier in the cast that we could have like you know Bisu like do a little reverse all kill situation, and uh, we we got what we bargained for. And uh, I can't say I'm happy. I'm happy we saw that. I, I didn't want to see just Terran just sit there and stomp Protoss. It's really nice to see an epic comeback like that, and uh, it's nice to see a man like Bisu, you know pillar that he is of the, this community you know, come back in full form and take out some great players here in short order that was so impressive man i mean mini took out royal the first time but yeah no other players got taken down by this protoss lineup bisu the old legend you know we don't think of him as the the leader anymore of protoss especially versus terran snow and best have kind of taken those roles but here once again establishing his dominance establishing his power level he's still one of the kings of the jungle not to be messed with an absolute ape great ape silverback gorilla in his own right putting these other protoss to shame man snow and best they've got to be blushing right now man getting carried on big daddy bisu's yeah. back throughout this yeah, series no crazy they're no supposed kidding. to they're supposed to be the ones who show up here man it's the t pvt finals and bisu bisu's putting them in his pouch and carrying them around yeah they, i think they ate too much and they're taking a nap you know they like ate way too much and now they're just like so lethargic after their big meals from their you know all the other weeks and now finally they will tuck it out and big papa bisu gonna be scooping them up putting them in the pouch and showing them what's up with his silver silver mane well, that's the third all kill we've seen from Protoss this season. <laughs> we've got in this lineup three all kill Protosses. Only Mini didn't get a, an all kill this season. Uh, that's kind of insane. That I, I mean, I don't think that's ever happened before in a season of KZM. Protoss, dominant, absolutely dominant throughout the series. I'm glad we still got a great series here. It was looking pretty one-sided to start things off, but Bisu really bringing it back for us. The expected result, Protoss going to take home this season. They're going to take home the prize money, and Terran going to uh, go home second place. Not bad for being basically the, the whipping boys of this entire season. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Nice way of concluding things, I would say, Sam. Yeah, we didn't go to all the way to game nine, but that's fine. We managed to get mm. eight sets of interesting TVP. Some of the ending sets here of Bisu really being uh, highlights of the night, though. Yeah, I mean, like, just absolute rampage from Bisu. Just bang, 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 bang in a row. Like, uh, I'm really impressed by him, man. Like, usually his PPT is, like, the thing that holds him back. And it's nice to see in recent times him, like, come into his element and kind of fix the kind of holes that he was having an issue with in past times and actually start to, like, take it to the, the, the highest echelon of players, even in that matchup that he used to struggle with a little bit. I am seriously shocked that he managed to dismantle Royal in the early game uh, in that last fight. That is crazy to me, man. Royal was handling, he was handling Best and Snow, who both tried to pressure him early so damn well, and Beast was able to get in there. Like, this is why Bisu was actually is known as such a great Protoss versus Zerg player, though, right? His early game Zealot control is so good. He's able to yeah. get in there and deal that damage. Just just wild to me. Um, the probe zealot combo as well. Really, really well uh, executed by Bizu. Um, it's strong in it's just as strong in or if not stronger in uh Protoss versus Terran as it is in Protoss versus Zerg, right? Yeah, I would say that BC is almost second to none in that Zealot control. You could argue that Snow is really good with his uh, Zealot control and his uh, Reaver control and blah blah blah. But usually like 
someone like Snow is like following a set path. Like he's used to controlling those units at those times and those situations. Whereas someone like Bisu, he's much more adaptive to any particular game state. He's not reliant on like known meta game states to like get that unit control and base production going at the same time. Bisu's able to spin the plates at the same time, regardless of what plates they are, what color they are, what size they are. He doesn't need to rely on like known paths or anything. Like he's been around the block long enough that he can spin like, you know, bowling balls and any kind of other objects uh, while also keeping the plate spinning and keeping those zealots dancing around in your base. Really impressive dancing by Bisu. He can dance all day. He takes day. out this entire Terran squad and I am just so impressed. I'm so happy to see him doing well and looking forward to seeing his performance in other tournaments, ASL and stuff. This is kind of like a supporting tournament, guys. The KCM here, but we're super glad that you're taking your time to come over and watch these games here even as the asl is going on we're going to continue to bring you guys this coverage uh going on into the further seasons we've got three more seasons this year i believe that's what we've been doing every single year four seasons per year i hope we're going to stick with the race war format though hope we're not going to do any two more too too, too many crazy experiments because this, this is really the winning formula yeah. i think that we've got yeah. um with this race war format it's just been a lot of fun and uh, i hope you guys have enjoyed it i i've really had a blast here with you shun and we're coming up on one year of casting yeah, together man on the kcm yeah and as always saying the pleasure is all mine man i'm always having a good time in the casting booth with you we always get to cast great games and even when the games aren't super great we always seem to have a good time of it so yeah it's happy happy to be here and hopefully for many more years to come well, your voice is sounding great now. So glad that we could get you a microphone and <laughs> can upgrade the, the quality of the cast here. Uh, we're going to continue to improve uh, as time goes on, uh, getting more, uh, whether that's just in our personal casting styles, in our ability to riff off uh, with each other and, uh, you know, our metaphors, our uh, memes are going to get better and better. Uh, as well as our casting gear because of your guys' support, guys. So thank you so much for supporting this project here. We've really had a great time in the finals, and we'll see you in the next season. That's not going to be next week, but it should be the week after, as long as there's no uh, Korean holidays coming up right away. But uh, in two weeks, guys, we'll see you back here for more KCM Season 2. It's right around the corner.